It's time for Windows Weekly. Paul Therott and Mary Jo Foley are here, and so is the Creator's Update. You can download it now, or you can wait till next week to uh, install it as an update. Paul and Mary Jo will explain what's new, what's different, why you may or may not want to download it, and then we'll talk about Apple's stunning announcement yesterday. It's all coming up, and the opportunity it presents Microsoft. It's all coming up next on Windows Weekly. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Windows Weekly is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Windows Weekly with Paul Therod and Mary Jo Foley. Episode 512, recorded Wednesday, April 5th, 2017. Windows as a disservice. Windows Weekly is brought to you by Audible. To download a free audiobook of your choice with a 30-day free trial, go to audible.com slash windows. And by Casper, an online retailer of premium mattresses for a fraction of the price. Because everyone deserves a great night's sleep. Get $50 off any mattress purchase by visiting casper.com slash windows and entering the promo code windows. And by Cloudflare, the operating system for the edge of the internet. More than 6 million websites, apps, APIs, and SaaS companies use Cloudflare's services to load fast, stay secure, and weather whatever the internet throws at them. For a free online chat session with a Cloudflare support engineer, visit cloudflare.com slash twit. It's time for Windows Weekly, the show where we cover the latest Microsoft news with Paul Therott from therott.com. And Mary Jo Foley from ZDNet and AllAboutMicrosoft.com. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. <laughs> Hello, Leo. Hello. <laughs> Hello. How oh, was your time off? I went to yeah. Vegas. I forgot to warn you that I wasn't going to be and here. And how dare you? I know. I apologize. <laughs> I apologize. But, um, yeah, it was nice. You know, Vegas is, Vegas is one of those places that sounds good. <laughs> it's like a cake. <laughs> It's like a cake. You've heard the old adage, one piece of cake, mm -hmm. delicious, two pieces of cake, okay, three pieces of cake, you wish you never saw cake. One day in Vegas, fun. Two days in Vegas, hmm. By the third day, <laughs> it's like, get me out of here. It's good for, you know, eating out, right? I mean, the restaurants no. in Vegas are fantastic, and the shows, yes, they are. Oh, Guys, it's a, we had a no. great sushi meal last time we were there. Oh, the, no, we the best did. food in the world is in Vegas. Yeah. No. No? Guys. What? Guys, what? if you live in New York, yeah, you're spoiled. food is not a draw for you in Los yeah, Vegas. Yeah, you're spoiled. You can go to the best restaurants in the world. And we did have an awesome sushi dinner there the last time, but that does not make up for having to go to Vegas. <laughs> you know, okay, but New York doesn't have great Mexican food. True. They do not. That's the uh, one. Well, it's, it's gotten better. It used to be I've really good, I've had good Mexican food here. But yeah, you're right. I mean, it's obvious. That's obviously way better than the West Coast. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's there's no Joel Robichon in uh, New York, although reputedly his chef is leaving Vegas to start a restaurant in New York. So oh really? Yes, mm. that's the mm. restaurant we go to. Is Joel Robichon? I know nobody cares. I'm just I'm sorry. I apologize. This let's talk no. about let's talk about Windows. Hold on, hold on. I care very much about what you just said, Leo. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> so I know we should move on, but. Paul, can I just recommend the next time you're in Las Vegas, you head over to the MGM Grand. I know there's no other reason to go there except for the Wizard uh, of Oz theme bar. <laughs> no, I think they, right. they even and shut the tiger that tiger you can walk under. Yeah, the <laughs> giant brass tiger. But uh, there's Joel Robichon, which is who's a great French yeah. chef. Oh, wait a minute. So wait, Mary Jo, actually, is yes. that where we were last time? Um, Was, were we in the, the MGM time? last time? Because the other really? choice from the sushi restaurant was a brand new French restaurant that is some A-list French Might have been chef, but I'm not. We oh, were, actually, Guy we Savoie has also now opened a restaurant, but that's in the Caesars, I think. Uh, we ended up going to the, the new sushi place, which was Miyamoto. Morimoto's. Like, was his name, or oh, Morimoto's. Morimoto's is great. We have one in Napa. I um, love Morimoto. It was great. That's an example, yeah, yeah. though. Fantastic. I, we have local Morimoto, so now I understand what you're saying about you don't go to Vegas. Because I would never yeah. go to Morimoto's in Vegas because we have one here. Yeah. But that's really good. Morimoto's is wonderful. Yeah, it was yeah. great. We had a great meal. <laughs> so next time, go to let don't go to the big restaurant, the but the L'Atelier, the workshop of Joel Robichon. You sit at the counter, yeah, and they have jamon. I mean, there's a jamon ibérico. Uh, 
in Vegas, right? At the Bellagio, I think. Yes. Which is also, there's a list you know, that's quite good. Quite good. You know, if you're into that kind of thing, which by the way, mm-hmm. I am. You are. If you're not a gambler, <laughs> which I'm not there, you know, you have I'm to find either. other, uh, other, uh, yeah. Other ways to lose your money. <laughs> Other ways to lose your money. <laughs> Go to a French it'd restaurant. Be cheaper, is great. believe me, to pay the high the the, the high slots. Table. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, uh, hello, kids. Hello. We are days away, less than a week away, from the very big day. Creators although, update. Although today, today is kind is of a big day. A pretty oh. big day. <laughs> How's that? Um, so if you really want to get creators update today, you can go get it right now. Um, it, you, Microsoft says if you're a tech savvy individual, not afraid of using their migration tool to go get it, if, you can go get it. If you paid and, absolutely no pro- attention to the problems that we had with the anniversary update, please uh, take the next one. It's <laughs> This one's going to be great. And if you're if you have an MSDN or a TechNet subscription, you also can go get enterprise education um, what was the other one? IoT. All of those are on MSDN right now as of this moment. So you don't mm. really have to wait till April 11th, but April 11th is the day when it starts rolling out to normal. It'll, it'll, uh, it'll appear as an update starting then. Yeah. Yeah. And, you and, reminded me. Sorry to yes. interrupt real quick. Um, they've talked about this release, obviously, for PCs, for phones. They've talked about it for right. Surface Hub. You just mentioned IoT. Mm-hmm. But the one thing they have never discussed, to my knowledge, at least to my memory, is HoloLens. Have they ever right. said when the creators update for HoloLens will? Arrive? I don't believe so. I do not believe so. Hmm. And Xbox, it's already there, right? Yeah, it shipped. I know it shipped last yeah. week. I think or the week before. So, whatever that was. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So yeah, if you're one of those people who just cannot wait, you should go get it. Now, what does that and, mean, though? How 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 is it a media creation tool, <clears throat> ISO? Kind yeah, of? it is the media creation tool. Although remember, you could also go to the Windows Insider download page and just download the ISO, right? If you want to do a clean right. install or whatever, you can do it that way too. So those, I had written an article a week or so ago about getting it right away, and at the time, the ISO was the one way. We knew <clears throat> we knew on April fifth this would be the next way, and then of course the general release is uh, next whenever that is next Friday. Um, next. April 11th. So that's oh, next Tuesday. Um, Sorry. Tuesday. Yep. Yep. And then uh, you just said that what MSDN and TechNet have it now as well. Right. But if yep. you are looking for it on Volume Licensing Servicing Center or whatever they call it, VLSC, not till mm-hmm. May 1. Um, so mm-hmm. if you're a volume licensee, you cannot get it till May 1. Interesting. And not for HoloLens ever. Well, Hol- you know, HoloLens must be getting it, right? Because they're trying to keep everything in sync right. now and, and have Xbox. everything share that one core. Yep. Xbox but is I out. Have, yeah, I have not heard when to get it. Yeah. You know, every time... <laughs> I have to ask Chris Capicella this, because uh, every time <laughs> you guys say Holo- HoloLens, I think yep. of the T.S. Eliot poem, The Hollow Men. Right. <laughs> and I was, just, I was just looking, and this is how it begins. We are the hollow men. We are the stuffed men. Leaning together, headpiece filled with straw. Do you think that there, this well, was an inside joke at uh, in Hollow the, Lens? Is a lie. <laughs> headpiece just filled like the cake with straw. <laughs> hmm. 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 Shape without form, shade without color. Paralyzed force gesture without motion. Chris Capicella's got to answer this question. He there's, will. There's some Get English, him on the horn. There's some literature Call major <laughs> in the uh, Microsoft code name department. Yeah. <laughs> pulling, a, pulling, a, pulling a fast one. my people one. call his people. I want to yeah. know what's going on Would here. Would you? Please. <laughs> Please. Uh, all right. So enough of, enough of this literary illusion. Uh, <laughs> side, <laughs> side note. But um, uh, creators update April 11th. Should people, would you... I mean, I guess I oh, wow. you you know who you are. The people who will run out yes, today and exactly. get it, right? I'm saying no. I've Not installed it on all my computers <laughs> because I'm an insane person. But no, I'm, you know why you should wait though. Remember, they're <laughs> going to throttle this rollout, and they're going right. to deliver it to devices that they are sure or closely sure are going to be able to handle it. So, if you have something, say like the Acer S7, that I don't know if that ever even updated to the last version of Windows 10. Um, and but, a good thing, probably. 
Yeah. The reason they hold it back is well, maybe there are it's drivers a driver. that don't It's a driver work. issue. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I, I have an um, HP that didn't get it until January. Yeah. So unless you really are a technically savvy person, I would say do not run out and get this. I thought what you were going to say was the reason you don't <laughs> want to install this right now is because Paul just said he installed it on all of his computers. Well, that's another good reason, but yeah. <laughs> Did you, Paul? Did you really? I, oh, yeah. yeah. You didn't even, even leave one for just in case? Well, I mean, I, I have 200 computers in there. So <laughs> you couldn't it's possibly probably, install it on all of them. Uh, right. The ones that I'm using. Right. So this, and then, by the way, that's not two or three. It's like several. So wow. I've installed it on a bunch. And but it I, worked fine. Yes, and th this is the thing. If you could find the show in early August, I think I mentioned this before, where we were talking about how we've heard very little in the way of error reports or problems with the anniversary update, and obviously that thing went spiraling downward. But my experience with this lately, you know, 15063 point whatever, has, has been excellent across the board. I should plug in a Kindle to make sure nothing explodes, but so far so good. <laughs> yeah. You're referring to the weird bug with the Kindle. And my webcam is working fine, right? That that's was a good. big issue. I mean, it's working. That's I right. Say. I don't know. It broke. That's that's a couple of things that I, the create the uh, yeah. anniversary yep. update yep. messed. You know, uh, you know what was good to see this week was Donna Sarkar posted a picture of them plugging in every kind of peripheral they could find in the build labs. <laughs> they learned their that lesson. Was, that was a little. Um, you guys tried obvious. the Kindle, Dramatic. right? Yeah. <laughs> Dramatic. But this is like it, this is the reliability theater thing, right? In other words, it is. we're going to make sure the last thing doesn't happen again, right? Yes. You know? Yeah, <laughs> we yeah. know that was kind of a bad experience. So, yeah, yeah. I have this theory. I don't know if I mentioned this on the podcast, but I, I wrote this somewhere that uh, in the in the context of oh, be, oh sorry, because we have a story like actually, actually this is coming up, but I think they're going to roll this thing out more quickly than they say they are. I think their goal this time around is to over. Sorry, to underpromise, right, and overdeliver, mm. mm -hmm. and we'll get to that in a moment. But I, I, I think because of what happened last time, they're being conservative, which makes sense. But I think their real goal is to be able to come back in a few months and say, "Surprise! You know, we did a great job." Surprise! I don't, I don't think they'll <laughs> well, say surprise. I mean, I we did a great right. job. <laughs> okay, sorry, hey, sorry. hey, guess what, kids? <laughs> okay, let, me re let me reward <laughs> we that. Did, we did the job right. <laughs> surprise! Yeah. Surprise! You're a mistake. No, I, I yeah. Good. Well, I hope that, you know. I hope that's true. I would be uh, yep. be lovely if uh, if there were no uh, showstoppers here and mm -hmm. everything yep. worked and the Kindle plugged in and yep. all of the above. Webcams are working. Webcams Kindles is working. Printers, charging. Yes. <laughs> printers are printing. <laughs> Acer yep. S sevens are acing. Acing. Uh, acing. <laughs> yeah. It'd be good. It would be a very good thing to see. And it would put a lot of people's minds at ease because I think mm -hmm. after what happened last time, it w I wouldn't say it was a disaster. I would say um, it gave people pause. Yes. Like, do and I the only reason I agree with that is most disasters happen really quickly. And this was more of a Titanic, <laughs> when is it going to go below the water kind of thing? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Disaster. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But okay. speaking of disasters, yeah, let's yep. talk about privacy. What? Hooray. What's the matter? <laughs> Whatever could be wrong. <laughs> sure. No, where I'm just being, I'm, I'm trying to be amusing, I should say. Because, you know, Windows 10 has had a lot of bad images around privacy yeah. um, since the yeah. product launch. Yeah. So today, Microsoft actually opened up a little bit more about what kind of data it is collecting about users with Windows 10 telemetry. So um, we already knew that they were going to change the privacy settings with the creators update and make them more opt in and more obvious so that you can't just accept the express settings and just whiz by and go, hey, I didn't agree to any of this. Now you're going to have to proactively go set these. But what, what's new today is Microsoft published two lists um, of the data that it's collecting through its diagnostics um, telemetry. So there's two different settings. There's one called basic and there's one called full. And so they went <laughs> on the web and published uh, the kinds sorry. of data and in some cases the actual data categories of what they're going to be collecting when you opt into either of those two things. This is great. This is great. <laughs> this is what 
You know, I mean, it's most good. people don't care, yeah. but those really serious privacy people, yeah. this is what well, they want. Here's the problem. I think those people want the third switch, which is called off. And there isn't one. And there isn't one of those. <laughs> ones, yeah. No, there still is no off switch. There is not going to be an off switch. Well, you mean you can't disable? As as well, but can you, but with the granular settings, you can turn off most of it, right? Or no? A lot of it. A lot of it. I mean, I, so I, they brought... The, the Yeah, so they have an interesting phrase with that, don't they? Mm -hmm. it, they basically say something to the tune of um, that data that is needed to keep Windows 10 running securely and reliably. Yep. You know, there, there is a certain amount of anonymous data, you know, that it's, it's uh, telemetry data that Microsoft to this moment uh, contends is required, you know, to, to, for this Windows as a service thing to work. And, mm -hmm. I, and I think the real um, impetus for this, because Mary Jo and I were kind of talking about this today, you know, w what is new here? And I, I think the the broader description about what's basic and what isn't, you know, what's um, full is a new discussion. Cool. I think they've, they've, they've spelled that out. So that's cool. But most of what they talked about today is is things they've said in the past. And I think what we're seeing here really is a reaction to some regulatory body stuff from Europe and elsewhere where some legal entities are starting to complain that maybe this thing is yeah. violating mm -hmm. privacy laws. Yeah. And so I, I, I think Microsoft's approach here is let's be really transparent, which, by the way, is always great. Mm -hmm. And I, I actually welcome that. Um, and let's finally spell out what it is we're doing. I, technically, I'm not 100% sure this addresses the real concern, right? Because being secretive about it is one thing, but still doing it is another. And so now they've kind of <laughs> said, well, we're still doing it, but... <laughs> but here's what we're doing. So, you know, it's, it is, it's absolutely a step forward. I mean, there's no doubt about yeah. it. it. It's just a question of whether this meets the need. Do right. you find it credible? I mean, that they, that they do have to leave these things on for reliability? So if you, if you buy into yeah. the idea Windows is a service, you have to leave them on. And because the, the um, updating mechanism that Microsoft uses needs to see which version you're on and are you up to date with Fair your enough. security Fair updates enough. and feature yeah. updates. Right? I'd agree with that. Um, yep. So I think they have to have that, you know, uh, I, I don't think, I don't think they could say windows as a service if they didn't have some way of checking against that. Telemetry implies that they're also <laughs> keeping track of what programs I'm using and whether they crash and things yeah. like that. Yep. Is that also yeah. the case? Uh, I, I mean, I, I I don't know. Well, that's off the, the problem. Top of my head. See, we don't that's, know what what they're leaving on. No, no, I I, I don't do. know personally. Okay. I mean, <laughs> what I'm saying is, we have links to Microsoft documents that explain exactly what they are looking at. I don't know if that okay. is specifically on either one. I'm sure it is. Right. And um, these documents, the they're not like little light reading. They're like thousands yeah. of words, like right. tens of thousands of words. They're yeah. huge. They're complete. <laughs> they're complete. That's good. They're sure. complete. And they're also hard to decipher. I was trying to read the one about full settings and they yeah. break things into categories and then your endpoints. And I'm like, I don't even know what this is telling me. Yeah. I don't. And the next I, thing you know, it you're like drooling and you wake up and it's like three hours later <laughs> and you don't know what happened. <laughs> yeah. And your kidneys are gone, and you're in a bathtub <laughs> full of ice. Yeah, yes, yeah. that one. And that's how you know you signed the Windows 10 EULA. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but, you know, all the all the main settings that people get really twisted about, like location data, um, speech recognition data, um, relevant ads. Like, do you want us to serve you up relevant ads? Um, do you want us to send you tailored experiences, which means tips? You can shut all of those things off. Yep. Like totally off. That's great. It, it is. Yeah. That's the thing great. that you cannot shut off is diagnostic. The thing called diagnostics. You have two choices: basic or full. That's what you get. That's fair. I. I know. I mean, you, I guess the hardest core privacy advocates would say, "I want an operating system stuff. that never phones yep. home." And for that, you should get Linux or something, and and yep. not Ubuntu because it phones home. You should get <laughs> I don't know, Debian or something, and. I don't know if you guys remember this, but two years ago, January, I think, we were we were out in Redmond, and it was a Windows 10 event, and it wasn't the reveal event. I think that was the previous September, October, mm -hmm. but at this event was when they announced that it was going to be a free upgrade, yep. and, and the way that they explained how you would always have to keep the computer up to date seemed like it was tied to that thing being a free update. Mm -hmm. In other words... Um, by accepting this free update, you are also accepting the fact that we yeah. are going to keep your computer always up to date. Mm. 
Um, that's how it seemed to me at the time. I mean, we could go back and kind of dissect the actual language they used. But obviously, if you flash right down two years later, you're in Windows 10. You're, you're accepting the updates, right? I mean, it doesn't matter how you acquired it. Um, businesses have more latitude about when they install updates and so forth. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, um, you know, you're going to be on this you're, you're getting on a train and it's leaving the station and you have to go with it. Like you can't decide to stick with Windows 10 version, you know, 15, 11 or whatever forever. Like you have right. to update. And, I'm, I, you know, it's it's kind of an interesting proposition, isn't it? I mean, they, they mm -hmm. really did change the agreement, it, it, implicit agreement that we kind of have always had with Microsoft about, you know, everyone would agree it's beneficial to keep the operating system up to date and so forth. But we really lost this measure of control. Yeah. And I think, you know, it, it's like kind of that age old argument about software, especially Windows, where you don't technically own the thing, you know. Right. We think that we do. You know, we paid money for it, maybe. It seems like it's ours. But mm -hmm. in reality, it isn't. And and this is sort of them exercising an amount of control that maybe they could have always exercised, but they're only doing now. Yeah. Yeah, I, I remember that now that you're bringing this up, that that was part of the whole contractual, uh, like, agreement. It was like, hey, yeah, you know what, we're like going to give this to you for free, but here's what you have to agree to if you are taking it. Yeah. And the, the advertising stuff in Windows mm -hmm. 10 kind of falls into this category. I will often write about that topic. I'll explain how you can turn off those <laughs> ads. I'll, I will complain about the fact that there are ads in Windows 10, and I will say, and it's been accurate so far, that it only gets worse over time. And some people agree with that, and fine. And then, but some people don't agree with it. And some people, like you've said, for example, not, I'm not saying you disagree with it, but you've noted, yeah. I don't really see the ads, for example. And I, I, hear, I hear that from some people, and that's fine. Yeah. And then some people literally disagree, and they'll say, well, I, you know, I got this thing for free, and if Microsoft wants to show mm -hmm. me some ads, I think that's a fair exchange, which it would be if they had said that was the deal, <laughs> right? Yeah. In other words, you right. can have Windows 10 for free. It's like when you buy a... Uh, some kind of a, an Android phone or something from uh, Amazon and they put some you know mm -hmm. lock screen ads on it and you know going in that this is the deal you're going to get it for less money in this case and in return you will have to deal with these ads and that's kind of a nice explicit agreement but I feel like the yeah. advertising thing like the regular updating thing frankly because who knows that Microsoft announced this at a January event two years ago yeah. um, it, it's kind of a squishy area for normal consumers because they don't necessarily, you know, they've assumed things were a certain way for decades and it was just kind of pulled out from under them, right? Which creates, yeah. I think, uh, some discontent. <laughs> some discontent, yes. <laughs> yeah, I, to be polite, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but on the private, back to the privacy thing, I think, I think it's good that they're doing what they're doing. There are still some people who are not happy. I'm hearing from all of them on Twitter today. And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think it's a step forward there. though, right? Uh, you, know, you would agree it with is. that, right? I mean, this is I would. them being transparent is absolutely better. Them explaining exactly what those two areas are better. Yep. Um, I personally have no problem with either one of these levels of mm -hmm. data collection, right? I think it's, I, I happen to feel personally that we're part of a community. We should should have to help each other. It's a little bit like wearing a seatbelt. Wearing a seatbelt helps you. Yeah, it also exactly. helps other people. Yeah. It helps other people too, yeah, right? And that's, that's what the they're thing collecting. To, I mean, I, yeah. I guess we'd have to read the documents to know. Yeah, they, but, it's not like yeah. they're collecting your social security number and your date of birth <laughs> and the name of your first child. Yeah. And, you know, that's not in one of the lists, right? I mean, this is obviously <laughs> stuff designed to keep Windows working more reliable. It's not about right. stealing your data and selling it to advertisers. It's about... Right. Improving the system. I think, I think the part people want to see how much of this is anonymous data, right? Like uh, when you yeah. when you look at the start of those documents, it talks about something being linked to your Microsoft ID. So I'm like, wait, does that mean this is not anonymized data, or does it not mean that? And I don't know enough about how to read these kind of privacy documents to know this. But I'm hoping, and I'm counting on watchdog mm -hmm. agencies and other security reporters to look at this and say wow, this is great, well, or wow, uh, this is scary. <laughs> one thing you should know is that you, Microsoft doesn't have to have your Microsoft account in Windows 10. So yeah. if you sign oh, right. up with a local account, right. there's no way That's for them true. to get that from you. So yep. it has to be anonymous at least sometimes, right? I mean, at least for those people who don't right. have Microsoft accounts. Yep. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. 
And I Hurry will be uh, over the next week reading in great depth that privacy okay. documents. Yeah. What you should yeah, do you is print it that. out on paper. It's probably <laughs> hundred you know, foot and a half tall. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just, <laughs> yeah, you know, you might lot. want to bring a highlighter because it'll be interesting. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 And I will testify next week. <laughs> testify. <Yes. laughs> Good. You do please, that. Well, you do. know, like Paul said, I'm <laughs> my I can't prove this, but my bet is in the next couple of days, the EU regulators are going to be weighing in on this because yeah, I think so. I don't think the timing was coincidental on Microsoft. You know, we mock yesterday. EU and how they really pursue American corporations, <laughs> et cetera, et cetera. But I think sure. we can thank them here in this respect that they have at least made Microsoft be more clear and even give us some controls. Now, is there a button that says just go ahead and do what you would express settings button still? No, that's gone, right? No. No, actually, I was, I was, I was thinking earlier when Mary Jo said uh, basic and full that. I would be yeah. the clown in the back of the room saying, hey, I have an idea. What do we call basic express? Yeah. Just a thought. <laughs> but is it express? Is it or is it? No, more? it's not exactly the same. It, this is specifically for privacy. The, the express settings in previous versions of Windows set other things as well. And I yeah. think you may remember when we first talked about this change. It's interesting because there's stuff that was in express settings that was kind of optional before that's not privacy related. That is now set by default, regardless of you know what you may want. Mm. Um, and so what, we've actually like lost set Bing as your homepage, like that kind of stuff, or no? Yeah, I don't remember. I'd have to go back and look at the full mm. list of stuff that's in Express. But if you if you were to if you look at that list, what you'll see is that some of it's privacy related, but a lot of it isn't. And so, you know, before 1703, you could choose Express or do a I think it was just called custom, and then you went through you know screen by screen and you turn things on and. You yeah. know, they pulled other things out. Like Cortana is now an explicit step in settings. It didn't used to be. That used to be one of those things in Express and so forth. So there's other stuff, but not yeah. a big deal. I think the privacy stuff is the important stuff. I mean, I still have computers that come up after setup on the Pacific time zone, despite the fact that you yeah. should be able to handle that kind of thing. There are goofy little things we used to have in setup that we don't have anymore. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you don't have a chance to give your computer a name, for example, which, you know, maybe doesn't impact <laughs> a lot of people, but. I actually think that's kind of a big deal, personally. Um, yeah. You know, this is, this is stuff that's missing. Yeah. So if if you have set up Windows 10 privacy settings in the past, what Microsoft said today was it'll default to what you set it to previously. So if you had, say, location <laughs> data turned off, when you upgrade to creators, yeah. it will be off unless you want to go back in and turn it on. But if you've so, never set up... Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, no, I'm sorry to interrupt. I, that sounds awesome on the face of it, but the thing people need to remember, you didn't set any privacy settings explicitly before. Probably. That if means you did that, custom, right? I mean, express yeah, you didn't, exp right. right? Which everyone did. So, technically, yeah. most people, that is actually a negative. Um, although you mm -hmm. still have the screen. So, in other words, I guess what you see there is the is the yes, no, yes, no. Is that what it is? On I think a, that's what you still see. Okay, right. so at least so, you still have the opportunity to read it. But right. be sure to read it because I those know. settings yeah. are probably not ideal for most people. Yeah. And if you've never set up a Windows 10 device before, and this is your first time with Creators Update, everything is set to no and off, which is good, right? So yeah, yeah. that's it. That that, is good. Like it's not automatically opting you into everything. It's opting you out of everything, which is yep. a good yep. thing. Yep. All right. Yep. We're getting there. <laughs> Yeah. We're getting yeah. there. We're getting there. Yeah, I mean, my big concern is for <laughs> novice users who yep. <clears throat> might uh, feel this is a little overwhelming, but it sounds like if you take basic, you'll probably be okay, right? It's pretty straightforward. Yeah. The screen yeah. is actually pretty explicit and pretty easy to decipher, I feel like. I don't feel like it's written for tech-savvy people. Good. good, And it has a learn more button also, which if you do... Um, hit that, you go to a page that has a th things laid out in much more depth. Like if you want to see, what does that really mean? Add relevance, right? Oh, that's yep. good. Just that's good. That. Yep. We should also yep. give Microsoft a little credit for the cloud service part of this, right? So they have a new privacy dashboard up in your Microsoft account webpage. I think it's <laughs> account.microsoft.com. Um, they did have privacy settings there before, but it's a, it's a much more involved thing. And you can really kind of go through and you can say, I want to erase this stuff forever. I want, you know, you can make all your changes there. Um, and that's a good general tip for everybody uh, if you have a Microsoft account, which I'm sure most people do. Spend the time uh, looking at that stuff as well. I think this is all uh, all for the or for the good. Me too. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's 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 mostly a net positive. Yeah, yeah. I'll have to you know I'll let you know when I install it. 
Yeah. And we will all be going through that when we do the creator's update, right? That's yeah, that's mm -hmm. part of the thing. Okay. Yeah, and in Windows 10 going forward, so if you buy a new Windows 10 computer, this will be a thing right. as well. Like right. you'll see this as yeah. part of the initial setup of the computer. Right. Let's take a little break, then we're going to learn about the seamless upgrade to Creator's Update that's going to take months. <laughs> Seamlessly for months. Seamlessly taking months. <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll do. <laughs> yes. Seamless. Seamless. There's no, you don't see the seams is what they mean. The seams are not visible. Invisible seams. It seems to me that if you are a book reader, a book lover, you will love the audiobooks at Audible. I joined very early when they first started in the year uh, 2000. 17 years. Um, wow. <laughs> 17 years a member. And uh, the reason I'm grateful to them is I had stopped reading. I mean, I just, I got tired at night. I'd get one page in and I'd fall asleep and I just didn't have time to read. But I did have a ridiculous at the time commute of, uh, of at least two hours a day, often four hours. And when I found audiobooks, man, I felt like my life had changed because I was so sick of, of Alice radio <laughs> over and over and over again. And, uh, you know, I just, I was just getting sick of it. And, um, and I, we didn't have iPods back then. So we, we couldn't bring our own music in the car. I really needed something. And I found. Yeah, when did you grow up? Was this like when, when was this, <laughs> Daddy? What was it like when you had to listen to the radio? Well, we had buttons that you'd push. We used to tell our own stories. We liked it, God damn it. We would stare at the radio as if it were a TV, imagining in our minds. Actually, we're back to doing that. Audible's it literally brings to life these books. Some of the best readers in the world uh, reading. Oh, I'd love to read. They've got they, this interesting. They. <laughs> It's almost political, isn't it? The Handmaid's Tale. They're doing The Handmaid's Tale. A, a rev oh, ooh, ooh, I clicked the wrong button. I got Alex Baldwin. Alec right. Baldwin's new memoir. Nevertheless, um, and of course, head. Alec. She stirred and reached over to sip from a raspberry. Whoa, we can't listen to that. Alec uh, reads that himself. But if you want to find out what she okay. sipped, you just uh, you just get that book. And I was seeing, I was seeing this, a dystopian classic more timely than ever Ooh, claire danes and a full cast oh i gotta get this this is one of the, my favorite books margaret atwood's one of my favorite authors one night chapter one. Oh, you see this is this is what they call a, a full cast dramatization which means this is like a movie in your in your head. It's just awesome. Neil Gaiman's newest North Mythology. He, he Norse Mythology. He reads this, and he is my gosh. Is he a good narrator? The players, many gods and goddesses are named in Norse mythology. You'll meet quite a few of them in these pages. See, I I love the idea of driving in the car and then this guy's re or gal's reading to you these great books. It just is fan. Fantastic. Paul is, of course, a big Audible fan, and I always like to give Paul a chance to recommend a book. The reason we're going to do this is we're going to give you a free book in a moment. I'll explain how you can do that. But, Paul, what are you listening to these days? So I'm listening to something called The Russia House uh, by Ooh, John Le Carré. Love so, Le Carré. Oh, man, I, I love him. <clears throat> every once in a while, I, I, years and years ago, in fact, I was in Germany, and it was one of those take a book, leave a book things in a hotel or whatever, and I took this book and I read I, I fell in love with it and it became a movie in the early 1990s um, with uh, Roger. I'm sorry. Um, geez, I'm losing my mind. The guy was James Bond. Roger Jam Moore? Uh, Sean Connery. Oh, Sean Connery. And, uh, yeah, 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 sorry, yeah, yeah. Michelle Pfeiffer. And Ooh. it's one of those. It, the movie is one of those movies where they, they actually have the dialogue right from the book. And you should go. It's, it's like a master class in dialogue. You should. It's worth watching the movie just for that stuff. Uh, it's kind of amazing. In fact, I just rewatched it recently again. I've been looking for this in, in Kindle form forever, and it just doesn't exist, not in the United States. And so they, a few years back, they came out with a new version on Audible, and it's awesome. Oh, so I've been plowing it. through this. It's really, really good. They've this got is a, a lot of great, drama great care, I mean, I, yeah. you know, that, that, that reminds me. I should probably just buy all of these on Audible mm -hmm. and have the complete. I bet a lot of them were done fairly recently because it looks like they all have new cover yeah. art and whatever. Yeah, including you know art from the movies or TV shows. Here's Tinker mm -hmm. Tailor Soldier Spy, which was a great yep. miniseries. Uh, I think that's Gary Sinise on the cover. Uh, look at this though: the complete George Smiley radio dramas from BBC Four, eighteen hours 
of radio plays yep. with most of his books. Oh, man. Now, I'm going to add that to my wish list. That's for sure something I'm going to want to listen to. Anyway, here's the deal. You can go. You can get that for free if you want, or any of the books we mentioned. When you go to audible.com slash windows, audible.com slash windows, you'll be signing up for the gold account. That means a book a month. Well, it, technically, it's a credit a month, but most books are a credit. 99.5% of the books are one credit. Some of the really long books like uh, Game of Thrones might be two credits. So you save up for that. But I think, you know, a book a month and the best books ever. And you get the Daily Digest of the New York Times or the Wall Street Journal. This is a great deal. Free for the first 30 days. Cancel any time in that first 30 days. You'll pay nothing. The book is yours to keep forever. And uh, that's what the other thing I like about Audible is I've I've got an Audible bookshelf, hundreds of books, and I can go back and listen. I'm gonna. This is. I I might I just have to buy this one. The complete George Smiley radio drama. Let me just play a little bit of this. Just to. When the last veil was removed, George blinked and blushed and understood. He'd imagined. So he said, fellowships and a. I should mention the um, audio quality on the samples is a little lower than you can get enhanced quality when you download it, which I always do. Me too. And uh, then it's pristine audio. It really sounds great. Audible.com slash Windows. Yeah, now we have so much storage on our phones and uh, devices, there's no reason to get a shrunk down version. By, oh, somebody's reminding me, Tom Merritt's new book, Pilot X, is now out on Audible. So if you're a Merritt fan, Daily Tech News show, Pilot X, narrated by Kevin T. Collins, is now an audio book on Audible. Congratulations, Tom. That's, that's pretty awesome. That just... Uh, just came out. All right, back to Windows Weekly. Hmm. We, huh? Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> huh? So it, it, this is actually this was what happened last time, and I think we've mentioned it many times. But we should remind people that even though that technically a week from Tuesday or this coming Tuesday the updates will begin, people won't get them right away necessarily. Right? It takes a right. while. It's going to take several months. 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 <laughs> Is uh, what they say, yes. I also think like the device thing that Mary Jo mentioned, this is based on, you know, maybe their experience from last time didn't go as, quite as quickly. Well, as yeah, that. you should take it seriously and, and only accept it. I This was always my advice when Microsoft offers it. Don't rush, even though you could. Yeah, and I, this isn't actually in my post, but when they do offer it, you'll have the option to schedule it as well, right? So, Oh, like say I, I could, you could say I'll take it on April 30th? Yeah, I think oh. that, right. I don't, I don't. I don't remember. Maybe you remember Mary Jo. I don't remember, remember the exact UI. But there, there's an opportunity in there to say, you know, not just put it off and keep dealing with it. But you could actually schedule it. Yeah. I think. I believe you can schedule it. Yeah, and they they're making those controls more granular too, so you can. Um, yeah. I guess postpone it for a longer period of time too, if you want to do that, and a broader set of hours, so that it won't automatically just update in the middle of you doing something that, when you're not ready. So yeah, <laughs> right. All of those good things. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I like that. That's uh, always funny when you turn on your computer and you have to wait. Because come on, they've pretty much fixed that now, though, right? I just experienced this the other oh, day. Never but, mind. Yeah, <laughs> I, 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 never yeah. Mind. yeah. So you know, you know what's funny about this? I know a lot of people who said this happened to them, and I have never had it happen to me. Knock on wood. And I wonder if it's because I never like shut that PC down that I have Windows 10 on, but I only just kind of put it in sleep or hibernation. Does that matter? Well, no, happen? because eventually it will no. still have to reboot to do that, right? In other words, it yeah. will let you defer it or whatever for a little while. Yeah. But eventually it's going to have to say, sorry, but it's 3 o'clock in the morning on Tuesday or whatever. we oh. got to do this thing. So Okay. I yeah, guess I've just been lucky. <laughs> I, I prefer well, you don't you work know, at 3 in the morning is what it is. No. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, and you know, look, it's better. Well, is it better? Let me think about this. I, I think it's better if you get up in the morning and the update has occurred and then you have to log in and like maybe you had applications that were running and now they're closed rather than mm -hmm. you wake up in the morning, turn in your computer and it starts saying updating. This may take several minutes, you know, or whatever it is. Um, I don't think anyone wants to see that. I had that experience. That's the experience right. I had the other day. And, and, yeah. and in that case, I did explicitly shut down the, the machine and it has uh, they've changed this in the creators update. But basically you get this as of today, you still have this option that says. I think it says uh, update and shut down or update and restart. And those are your options. So you're, yeah. you are updating. 
and you click yep. the the shutdown one, and then you forget about it, right? Because, and the thing you get to remember about these offline updates is part of it happens on one end of the reboot, and the other one, part of it happens on the other end. So oh, yeah. is it actually mm -hmm. still more updating to come when you turn it back on? Yeah, that's on. right. Yeah. So that's a, it's yeah. A, yeah, it's a little fun game we play with Windows. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Mm. Um, anyway, so don't rush if you don't, you know, you'll get it. Soon enough, as soon as Micah yeah. thinks stuff thinks you're ready for yeah. it, I, you say, know, like I said earlier, honey, like, waiting a few weeks is smart. Um, at time least for the and, big boy windows now. <laughs> but I mean, after after, after after by the way, after two to four weeks, I mean, if you're offered it on that machine and you've not heard any horror stories out in the world, I, I think you could feel pretty good about at least Microsoft's expectations for how well it's going to go. Right? They don't. Mm -hmm. yeah, they don't want this to go poorly. But people, guy so. smiling in the chat room is asking, but I, I think I know the answer. But only guy me. smiley, really? Yeah, that's his name. <laughs> Why? <laughs> you got a problem with that? I, no, I, we were just talking about Lake Carre. So I, <clears> oh I yeah. Smiley. Oh smiley. Oh, I didn't put two and two together. <laughs> smiley is asking in the chat room. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. mm -hmm. Will the media creation tool be updated on April 11th, or is the update we're getting today the so final that's version? What, that's it, right? Oh, I see yeah. what you're saying. Uh, that's a good question. I think this is it. <laughs> I think we can officially say this is it. It's the gold master. But, RTM. I mean, it, ding, I, ding, ding. ready to so, mainstream. Release to mainstream. Do they, do they actually update the creation tool with cumulative hmm. updates, or do they only update I it? I think they're pretty good about keeping it up to date. But I may be wrong. I don't because the right, difference there may be more cumulative updates between today right. and yeah, next there've already been Tuesday. several. So I, yeah. I mean, in other words, if you get six, you know, fifteen oh six three or whatever it is, dot zero. Versus mm -hmm. dot eleven, which is just bug fixes. Those are updates you can get from Windows Update very quickly right. after you install. I don't know that they're going to update it. This for is that. one for uh, this is one for Donna Sakar. Somebody is. <laughs> what yes. what does it what triggers an update to the media creation? Oh, tool? sorry, Leo. Let me help. Let me let me explain how you say this in Microsoft words. Yeah. Um, what cadence is the uh, <laughs> media creation tool up, updated? Uh, Sound off one two three four. Update. Yep. Uh, okay, so we don't know. But some there are obviously minor and uh, minor updates that don't get rolled into the media creation tool. I don't think. I mean, I, I don't. I'm, I'm guessing here, but I, I don't think they're going to update it again on April no. 11th. Yeah, that, that's yeah. my guess. Yeah. But I bet you there is a cadence, as as they say. Oh, I can guarantee you, there's a cadence. <laughs> there's probably a book, a manual <laughs> the, somewhere. The, the, the question, yes, yes. A, it's a very formalized process. Yeah. Um, yeah. The question is whether that cadence is literally. Once or twice a year, or right. if it's monthly, or you know, and I'm off the top. Of my I head, would I'm actually that would be not just for now, but in general, an interesting thing to know is when does the media, where when does the ISO get updated? At what, it, what, it what triggers updated. an ISO I mean, update? Yeah, is it a major upgrade like yeah. 1607 yeah. versus 1703, yeah. or is it monthly with you know Patch Tuesday cumulative right. updates? I don't believe it is, but um, mm -hmm. remember, I mean, because of cumulative updates, I mean, think about it, even if. Uh, today you got the media update tool and it updated you to 17, you know, six, no, that's a good, that's a bad example. Well, yeah, no, yeah, we, it updated you to 1607, right, is the version that came out last July, last August, mm -hmm. right? You would have yep. some several updates, I mean, right, but you wouldn't have hundreds of updates because a lot of those are cumulative, cu cumulative, cu I added that. Cumulative. <laughs> cumulative. <laughs> Uh, it's like a Dean Martin roast in here all of a sudden. Um, <laughs> I'm Foster Brooks. And I want to know when the yeah. update. Anyway, um, uh, they, it wouldn't be horrible, right? Even if even if you had to go back to last year, no, it, it's a minor. That, it wouldn't be that. Yeah, it's yeah. a minor annoyance. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, okay. I guess we found another ad on uh, Windows 10. <laughs> And yeah, this, this is my new career. Yeah, um, it is. Find yep. the ad. <laughs> finding ads. Finding ads and then explaining how to get rid of them. So this one, I, I couldn't explain how to get rid of. Um, there's a new share pane in the creator's update. And in the past, it used to work like the Windows 8 share pane. It was over on the right side of the screen. It came up, you know, on the side of the screen. Um, in the creator's update, it comes up as a window in the middle of the screen. So neat. It's new, whatever. Um, there's an ad in it now. And it's not really an ad, you know, like buy this kind of Windex or something. I mean, it's an ad for an app, right? But the idea is you're sharing something from an app to an app. You get a list of compatible apps in the share pane. And then there's this other app over in the corner that you don't actually have yet, like Box was the one that I saw. Uh, maybe you want to download Box. Maybe you do. I don't know. So 
this is one of those gray area ads. It's obviously something that would be useful to some people. I, I, I'm not contesting that. And it's obviously something that might be annoying to some other people. Um, however, if you screw around with the uh, all the different ways in which you can turn off ads in Windows 10 in settings, which are all listed under the term tip or suggestion, none of them impact the share pane. And so my initial reaction was like, wow, they really got this sneaky little way of getting an extra ad in Windows 10 without, you know, being able to turn it off. And so I tweeted about it. And um, uh, Jen Gentleman from Microsoft, who, by the way, is uh, it is her birthday today. Happy birthday. Mm -hmm. um, said, actually, you can turn it off. And the way you do it is you right click on it directly. And then I think it says turn suggestion off or something like that. And that turns it off, which, by the way, I'm, I'm glad you can do that. But to Mary Jo's point earlier about privacy settings and how you can go and turn them all off, which you can, they're all over the place, right? And so here we have yeah. yet another ad with yet another way to turn it off in yet another location. And it's completely inconsistent with the rest of that stuff in Windows 10. If you mm -hmm. go to settings in Windows 10 and, and go to search and type in S-U-G-G, -G, you will see a list of seven or eight items that are all what I would call ads, frankly, and you can go and you can turn them off. They, it, you can find them that way. <laughs> you turn but them off by like clicking an X in the upper right-hand corner or something? Or? No, you, you have to go yeah. navigate to that page, actually find the setting and then okay. set it to off. But you, right. you can turn them off. You can you do know. it. This one's not in there. So I'm glad you can turn it off. It's, it's not going to impact a lot of people. Frankly, I don't think seven people even use the share functionality in Windows 10 to begin with. Um, yeah, that's I'm why they put to... the ad there because, uh, well, nobody will see this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, it's an ad savvy. for Dropbox, isn't savvy. it? It's an ad for or, Dropbox. Is it? So that sounds oh, like a well, paid box. ad if it's, it's or for... Or Box. Is it Box or Dropbox? Either way, that would be a paid ad. That's it, not it a Microsoft one, product, uh, right? Yeah. Well, no, because they're trying to promote apps, right? In other words, they, I, I understand why they're doing it. They're suggesting an app that would make sense in the context of what you're doing. Like maybe you want to share this document or whatever it is to Box, you know? And, and, and I want to be totally fair to Microsoft on this one because there is an interesting point to be made that let's say you use Box and let's say you install the desktop sync client for Box, which I've never done, but I assume it works like the one for Dropbox, like the one for um, OneDrive, whatever. Uh, and so you already have Box in your computer, do you think? And then you go to share something and one of the things that comes up is like, hey, if you, you could use the Box app in here and you're thinking, well, I already... I already have the box app. How come I can't just use that? It's not the same thing, right? They're they're talking about the box mobile app, which works like the box mobile app does on iOS or Android. <laughs> and that's what you need to get that kind of system integration with it. Well, you don't have to technically need it, but pretty much you need to get, you know, share integration. So even though you already have box, it might be useful for you to know that if you had the box mobile app on Windows 10 as well, you could do additional things with it. So right. I'm not saying it's completely useless irrelevant right and you know what yeah. they call these they call these tips they don't call them ads yeah. they call them tips because they're like no, they you know don't what? call them ads. yeah that's true. they do they do yeah. no i know i know um, no I don't, i'm not saying that they're right in calling it but i mean they they are saying you know what you, you might not know you could do this so i'm not justifying it i i yeah. not trying to at all but um i i know because i get i get ads yeah. on my Android phone all the time for, or no, when I'm, when, when I'm in outlook.com, I get ads all the time for putting outlook on my Android phone. Yeah. And I'm always like, already, that's weird. Which you already right? have because it's not very <laughs> yeah, I already smart. have. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So. Yeah. This is the, the OneDrive ad that appear, or I guess it's an Office 365 ad that often appears in a file explorer in Windows 10 is mm -hmm. annoying to people because they're already paying for the Office 365 right. service that gives them that, you know, yeah. That uh, storage. Why don't you know this? And it's because you privacy nuts made them turn off all the data collection stuff. <laughs> but it is, it, it's, you know, the kind of the central irony of all this, really. I mean, yeah. the ads by definition have to be kind of dumb because they're literally not collecting data to display mm. ads. And this is what happens. You get these stupid ads. Oh, I'm sorry, tips. Tips. They're tips. tips. Not ads. Tip gate. Tip gate. Yeah. Does, has anybody it's ever asked Microsoft was were you were you paid? Were you compensated for this? Yeah, you know, well, that would be interesting to know. Because right? then it's yeah. an ad. <laughs> then there's then well, you the can't way, so, say yeah. anything but yeah. it's an ad. Well yeah. uh, I, I I would argue it's an ad regardless. Well, it is an ad from our point of view, but I'm curious. Yeah. Well, in the sense that they benefit from it one way or the other. In other words, even if uh, Dropbox or Box or whatever wasn't paying them explicitly for you know, page views or whatever it is. Um, Microsoft is benefiting because they're promoting their own app platform and they're that's what they're really trying to do here. In other words, 
you know, Windows 10 is this thing that's really popular on PCs, but what they would like it to be is an app platform that's popular across device types. Um, and part of that success requires this app platform to take off. And so it kind of behooves them to do this kind of thing. Uh, and I understand it. I, I get I get the why of it. But ultimately, that is an ad, right? And, and yeah. that it may benefit some people is great, but it doesn't negate the fact that it's, yeah, it's an ad. And it also yeah. doesn't negate the fact that we don't have an expert mode where I can say, I don't ever, I, I want one switch, right? I don't want all of this stuff off. I don't need it. I don't need your tips or your mm -hmm. suggestions. I don't need app recommendations. I don't, I just don't, I don't want to see that stuff everywhere. You know what? I wonder if at some point they will have a centralized place for those settings because of watchdogs or, pri or not privacy <laughs> yeah, advocates, yeah. but somebody going after yeah. them about it. Yeah. They'll move on to the next big thing and that will, will be the, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yep. Could be. Right. Well, it'd be sad if they're not getting paid for it. <laughs> I know. You like, know if you're going to have an ad, at least make some money <laughs> I on wonder, it. I wonder if I don't believe they get paid for every um, Windows Store app tip that comes up on on your um, no. start bar. Yeah. I don't think they do. Yeah, no, I don't I, think that's the point. I, I really do. I think it's just to promote app usage, right? Because in other yeah. words, the more people use apps, the more people discover apps through these mechanisms, the more they can promote to developers that this is a happy platform and, or a healthy platform and that this stuff works. Yeah, but, but know, it's a little it's weird a to promote a competitor, though. I mean, Box or, or or Dropbox, whichever it is, competes against OneDrive. That's, <laughs> but that's not weird for Microsoft, right? Microsoft's no. main business is not OneDrive or online storage, right? Um, they promote these other services all the time in different ways. They they allow Office to interoperate with them already. Mm -hmm. I mean, honestly, it doesn't hurt Microsoft if you use Dropbox today. If Dropbox had a full-featured Office 365 alternative and people were switching to that, this might be a different story. Mm -hmm. um, but today, that's something that interoperates with what Microsoft does. They're a partner. Um, if you use Dropbox instead of OneDrive, I don't think Microsoft cares at all, right? Mm -hmm. I think they. I kind of think they care, but right. I, I think they. So is this a, uh, a knifing the baby situation? I know that's a terrible <laughs> term, but we've discussed that in the past. That you know sometimes. Yeah. Well, it's the greater good. Like, in other words, it's the, what is it, the Solomon decision where you have to split the baby in half or whatever. Like, which one is more important? I don't know. It's all baby and killing for me. I don't know why. Um, I guess yeah. what I'm trying to say is Microsoft <laughs> has all this stuff. And some of it's very important. Yeah. Some of it isn't. Right. And so no, is Windows or the UWP platform more important than OneDrive? Yeah. Mm. Is Office 365 right. more important than OneDrive? Yes. You know, I mean, yeah. it's a weird thing to have to put them face to face like that. But I think yeah. that's the decision thing they Right. And if it, if it is a paid ad, this is interesting because I, I know yeah. this just from at my on my site at ZDNet. Periodically, competitors to Microsoft buy out my entire site's advertising. Like I've had for a while those surround ads um, mm -hmm. from Google. And I think I had them from Apple and at one point on my it, site. But it happens on this show as well, right? It's smart, right? <laughs> we've, we've had Amazon Web Services on yeah. this show. Uh, we yeah. got Cloudflare sure. today. Um which is a CDN. I guess that sort of competes with Microsoft. Sure. Right. Um, All is fair in love and advertising. Yeah. When, we sell, when we sell ads, I, I don't say, you know, hey, Amazon, you got to advertise on Windows Weekly. But they right. know what shows we have and they yeah. choose the show. We don't, we don't place you, advertisers. You likewise don't say, hey, Amazon, we got to do something that's a little pro Windows, if you know what I mean. If you know, wink, wink, <laughs> nudge, nudge. You know? I mean, it's just. No, they choose. Yeah. I, I actually have never mentioned this, but I. I we don't choose the shows that companies are going to advertise on. They look, they say, "I want, we want to be on Windows Weekly." Mm -hmm. So it's like uh, they don't choose us; they end up here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're the remnant in inventory. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Yep. Well, uh, we don't have any other space. You want to be on Windows Weekly? Uh, what do we get stuck oh, with this week? Spin the wheel. Uh, what is Windows Weekly? <laughs> on three of those things. <laughs> no. yep. It does not work that way. I promise you. You're a very sought-after show. Sold out, as a matter of fact. Uh, woo, 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 woo. Um, actually, speaking of competitors, I, I guess we're going to get to this, but you did see, I don't know if you're going to get to this one, that Amazon is rumored to be working on a office suite. Uh, yeah. More competing with Google, I would think, than uh, than Microsoft. But I think Microsoft. Well, really? <laughs> yeah. It's, I mean, I guess it's both. It's Google both. Dry, Google's apps compete with Microsoft. So if yeah. you're competing with Google, I guess you're competing with Microsoft. Yeah. 
Yeah. That sounds a weird value prop there because I, I think Google has their thing and people understand what they are. And I think Google's really big with uh, startups and small companies. Yeah, and so we, yeah Microsoft we use them a lot. Yeah. Well established, right? But yeah. Amazon is super popular for what I would call back end services. Um, whereas these things are. You know, uh, this is front facing. Like, this is user facing. Front facing. Yes. Yeah. yeah exactly. It, it's a, a web service. Yes, but it's really uh, it's also UX and and it's the stuff that Amazon's not necessarily. No, they're dipping their famous. toes for the first time, I think, in yeah. consumer facing. And that probably started with the Echo. Uh, yeah. And and well, and you know, well, and, and Kindle, Fire TV, like and Kindle's Kindle. There. Yeah. The, you know, absolutely. This is. Yeah. Yeah. But the reason and the reason I, I say Microsoft more than Google is who's number two cloud vendor? Microsoft, not Google. Sure, sure. Yeah. This is about having a complete solution. In other words, you want to yeah. be a one-stop shop. And so Microsoft right. approached it from one angle and got into cloud. Google and I guess Amazon started with cloud and now they're getting, or later got into productivity services, but they all kind of mm -hmm. meet in the middle. Yep. And um, yeah, they, you know, it, it, see, you know, it's like uh, we have Fios and we can add our Verizon phones to the Fios bill. It's kind of a nice thing, right? It makes it mm -hmm. easier. Um, regardless of quality of service or anything like that. And I think that's the same theory here. I mean, you could get different services in, as an enterprise from all these different vendors, but isn't it nice if you could just make it one mm -hmm. simple thing, assuming yes. it all works? Yeah. Uh, do, do, do. More apps. More app updates with the creator's update. Yeah, so the crazy update's done, you know, as we know, pretty much, uh, one way or the other. And one of the weirdisms as you get toward the end of that cycle is the apps freeze in time because they're trying to come up with a stable image that will become that version of Windows. And so that doesn't mean the apps stop getting updated, you know, they, they but they froze them. Remember, that was a complaint I had a few weeks back for the for the fast ring. It seems like the fast ring should always be the, you know, the latest code. Uh, but now that it's out, and by out, and I, I, by the way, I guess the way we know that Creators Update is kind of released or out or available or finalized or whatever you want to say, is it's available to all of the rings, right, in the Windows Insider program. And that's really interesting, right? And so that's given Microsoft now the opportunity to do what they do every single time, which is start pumping out all these app updates. And it's not that any of them are necessarily major, but a, a lot of them now are going to address underlying technologies that they added to the creators update for the first time, which is interesting because they, th th those app updates, even though the apps come with the creators update are updated post creators update, if that makes sense to support new features in the creators update. And I'm obviously having a contest with myself to see how many times I can say creators update in one sentence. <laughs> <laughs> and I think I just won. It's anyway. To say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, the best example of this is the Windows Store app. And so it doesn't look that different. You get the update. It looks the same. There's some subtle differences on the download page. For example, you can see the, the speed of the download and so forth, which wasn't there before. But now what you have is an interactive notification that lives in the, um, in the Action Center, if you don't see it when it pops up. And that's actually a new thing from the Creators Update. And so now you know th there's like a, a course uh, app, uh, the store in this case, supporting a new feature in the operating system. Um, Groove and the movie and TV app are uh, supporting these new, um, I don't know if this is really the name, but it's like the Project Neon kind of uh, animations and the new translucency effects and so forth. And I think that's something we're going to see uh, more and more in different apps over the course of the year. And so it's, it's just kind of an interesting timing thing. The Creators Update is done, and now the apps for the Creators Update are suddenly getting updated at a much faster clip. <laughs> It's not because they share developers. No, it's just the it's the cadence, Leo. Oh yeah, <laughs> at which uh, yeah. at which this happens. I mean, it's a natural kind of thing. Well, they, I the guess app, they wait to see what the final version of the update yeah. I mean, apps updated. can be updated at any time, and they are right. Right. But now that the creators update is a thing, they can start addressing specific new technologies that are kind of hiding under the covers in this release. And so I think that's what we're starting yeah. to see now. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's interesting. Taking advantage yeah. of the new features. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, do, 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 do magic windows here. <laughs> what is magic window? So it's the magic window. If oh. you're in the insider program, there's a special time of year. It's not Christmas. It's not Easter. It's not Arbor Day. <laughs> it's magic window time. <laughs> it's, a, it's a little different every <laughs> Does year. Does it have a theme but, song? <laughs> it should have a theme song. But right around the time of the release of any major new version of Windows, all the stars align, right? Where... 
um, you're on the same build. If you're if you're if you have the shipping version of Windows, if you have uh, the fast ring, if you have the slow ring, if you have the release preview ring, they're all on the same exact build number. And this is the only time of year that you, as an insider, can opt out of the insider program with no repercussions whatsoever. Meaning, if you wanted to go back to the shipping version of Windows oh, from the greatest update, you'd I have to reset the, magic the whole window computer. last time. Yeah. Yep. So you can do that right <laughs> yeah. now. In fact, I did it today. <clears throat> On this computer, but I just realized it didn't reboot, so I have a nasty surprise waiting for me later. Uh -oh. um, but I will do that. I'll, I'll try to remember to do that. Um, you have anyways. until when? Mm, that no, that's the thing. You don't know. You don't it, that's, know. It's, it's, a, it's fun, a magic it's a fun window. Game. It it's could magic. slam on your fingers at any time. <laughs> exactly. It's like the scene where the elevator is stuck between floors and the person yep. is crawling out. You're like, don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> yeah, I hate right. that. Right. We we don't know. Like, when's the first? thing that's technically redstone 3 official build going out that's when the window slams could shut, be any time right? I, I i i look i don't think today. it's gonna happen i don't right. think it that's will true. yeah i don't think so but it could be you're right it could and yeah. i think they're gonna give people at least a week or two right i think i Me hope too. i don't know. but the point is if you if you have any designs to do this it's now or never mm -hmm. Yes, do it right now. Yeah. And you have to do it, obviously, separately on every computer. So yeah. if you have multiple computers. I remember doing that because I, I didn't. I was on Insiders on my uh, Surface Book, and I decided mm -hmm. I wanted to be normal like the rest yeah. of us. Yeah. Like <laughs> well, and, and the other thing is, you know, the, the first several builds of the RS3, tr you know, tree or whatever we're calling it, uh, the next version of Windows, will be under the cover type things, it, potentially disruptive from a reliability standpoint. There won't be a lot of new features necessarily. That's what they've said. Um, and so opting out now isn't such a horrible idea. If you even less if you want to test for the next few months to be an insider. and potentially less reliable too, right? So mm -hmm. your your computer right now should be in a pretty workable state. RS, or, mm -hmm. uh, the Kratos update is pretty stable and reliable, and it's working well. You know, take it off yep. the just uh, opt out, you know, disenroll yep. it. Right. The first few builds are usually what they call one core refinements right. right so you don't see any new brand new features typically yep. until a couple usually a month or two in right but it still is updating you if you haven't opted out yeah and so just I mean, look, even if even if the updates go fine it's still disruptive yeah. because yep. all of those updates are big full installs of windows they have the computer has to reboot like we've been describing and you may just want you may not want that disruption for nothing in other words you're going to reboot and have no new features so yeah. what's the point? What am I testing exactly? So even people that want to test the next version of Windows might want to just take a few weeks, a couple months, whatever mm -hmm. it is, off. Follow what's going on with the new builds as they come. And maybe, who knows, in May or June or something, there might be some yeah. awesome new release with all these new features. And then you might want to jump in again. My, my guess on the timing of how this is going to go is first Redstone 3 builds probably sometime after April 11th, which is when everybody gets yeah. creators update. Then... Yeah. The real ones with the real features that are interesting are going to start, I bet, around the time of build because I bet Microsoft's going to talk about this at build. So build is yep. mid-May this year. So I, I would guess if you aren't getting those builds, Redstone 3 builds, up until middle of May, you probably are not going to be missing out on a lot. Yep. yep. Just a guess, though. They haven't said that. No, that makes sense. It makes sense. Yeah. Don't miss out. Don't miss out. Fear of missing out, people. But don't Fear don't give in to that. Apparently, <laughs> Microsoft has already shipped three up cumulative updates. That's kind of surprising mm -hmm. for 1703. This, we're yeah, calling it 1703. I, this is the... Yeah. yeah. When I wrote that article, it was only two, but they shipped another one. Wow. <laughs> so, <laughs> this is what always happens. I, and again, I'm not... I, I, I'm not... Don't get this wrong. Don't take this wrong. I'm not approaching this from a cynical standpoint. I don't mean... Oh, they shipped it on some arbitrary date and it's not ready. It wasn't now they ready. Have to fix it. I, that's not what I mean. Windows is on a constant updating schedule, right? If you look at the stuff they have documented for what they fixed, all of these things are fairly minor. They're in in some cases specific to a certain machine, whatever. They're going to update Windows every month, guys. It doesn't. This stuff doesn't matter. But it's it, but it is notable. Uh, in fact, I would say the time the whatever that day was a week or so ago when they shipped the first of the three. Mm -hmm. To me, that was the indication that this thing was done, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Like oh, they interesting. Shipped a you know, I mean, in other words, they shipped a cumulative update for an existing. Well, I guess they do. They've done that in the past too. It's kind of hard to say, but mm -hmm. I, I took that to be the the That's real RTM date. In yeah, a way. yeah. That's very interesting. Yeah. 
and RS3 hints. Redstone 3 already. We're thinking. What's next? <laughs> what exciting oh, is, new features. Yeah, this is bracing something uh, that Brad wrote, and I actually I sort of alluded to it earlier, but um, there's this, is it Project Neon? Am I getting that name right? It sounds weird yeah, when I Neon. say it. That's right. I, there's a user experience update coming in the next version of Windows, supposedly, that is supposedly called Project Neon. And depending on who you talk to, it's either a big deal or not a big deal. Uh, Mary Jo, who doesn't see ads, also sees absolutely zero <laughs> difference in this. And she I see no neon either. I, uh, <laughs> I see no ads. I see no neon. Yeah. So not interested. It, it, it's, it's a little hard to explain, but part of it is translucency effects. And so there are certain parts of the window that you can kind of see through it. We, we all understand that part of it. And then uh, some of it is animations, and those are a little hard to describe. But if you think about a window that has a pane at the top, like that has stuff about an artist, like in the Groove app or whatever, and you start scrolling down the page, instead of that thing just scrolling up with you, what it does is it scrunches down until it displays only a little bit of information, and then it stays there as you scroll. And so it's just kind of a it's, – it's, it's sort of a UI – convention it's kind of an elegant thing um mary joe doesn't see it it doesn't matter the point is um I, you know what's <laughs> funny i i'm i'm not against it every time somebody yeah. says here's a picture of project neon look at that i'm like I, what am i even yeah. looking at i don't even know what i'm seeing <laughs> right it's and a I, subtle I know that's difference. true it's i, I know way that too she's subtle telling the truth me. because <laughs> she pings me on skype when this happens and she says can you please tell me if there's something different in this picture? <laughs> yeah. And it's like that like, game in Highlights Magazine yeah, right. where you're like the two things are side by side and there's five differences in the drawing or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And um, I never see any of them. I'm like, okay. So I guess, I guess someone... tiles on the blah, blah, blah. Okay, what? I'm sorry. Yeah. I like, I like this. Case. I don't know. I, somebody published a, a mock-up. It's not a real thing, but I guess it's a mock-up of what the UI for Windows will look like. So I'm talking about stuff I've seen in apps. But I guess they're going to be doing this to the start menu. So the start menu will have translucency behind it. Uh, translucency in the tiles, which is something, by the way, we had Windows Phone like you know, five years ago and a long time ago. Yeah. Um, and actually, I'm looking at the start menu now. There is translucency in it already, so I'm not even sure what they're talking about. But See, you anywho. don't see it either. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't really look at the start menu, period. So you know, whatever. <laughs> anyway, we're starting to get our first glimpses yeah. of Stuff that Mary Jo will never know is an RS3. We'll never notice it, no. So is it just mostly transparency, stuff like that? or Yeah. yeah. It's like, or, you know, we, we think there are going to be a lot of things in Redstone 3, like the new people experience is supposed to be in there. Um, some new stuff for Continuum is supposed to be in there. But so far, you know, since there aren't any RS3 builds out, not we haven't actually seen these. These are just rumored things that will possibly right. be in Redstone 3. And Redstone and, 3 is supposed to be out this fall. Right. Probably won't see him in the first couple of builds anyway. No. So. No. We shall see. What you worried about? Don't worry. <laughs> Back. Don't it's going to be a while. <laughs> You're not going to notice it anyway. <laughs> you have to. Yep. Yep, yep. Mary Jo is neon blind. I kind of am. <laughs> yep. I, you know, I know in theory what this is supposed to be. It's supposed to be like arrow glass, right? Right. That's, what it, I, yeah. that's how it sounds to me. And by the way, you know, thanks to Twitter, I'm going to hear from every got clown on earth who's going to be like, congratulations, <laughs> yeah. Microsoft. You just brought back the feature you introduced in 2009. Yeah, arrow class. Right, <laughs> right here's, here's Martin Anderson who's watching said, it's not just translucency, it's blur, it's frosted effects. I don't oh, know what any of this is. Frosted does. effects. I don't care. Blur, blur and, tr great. and frosted effects are forms Sorry, of transparency. I appreciate you guys <laughs> telling me this. I, I am happy to know, but I... Yeah. I just don't like. I don't see that oh, kind of stuff, and I'm just I'm just a word person. If it, if it looked like if it had <laughs> if it pastel great colors text. like an Easter egg, would you yeah. notice that? What if it was maybe like pinks and light blues and light Possibly. greens? Possibly. You know what's you know what's weird though. You know how some people are very visual people. I am not because if you said to me right now, like, what kind of um, accent colors do you use on Windows 10? I'd be like, I don't know. Uh, what do you mean accent colors? <laughs> what do you mean? I know what, what you, they oh, are. Oh, there accent colors like, in Windows 10? <laughs> like, I don't know. Like, even if you said to me, are you, using a, are you using a dark or a light theme? I don't even know. Like, I, like I'm like i not on Windows 10 right now during the show, so I'm just like, I don't know. What am I using? I don't Everything even remember. Everything you just said was like a stab to my heart. <laughs> I Paul's know. a designer. He is. I know. Yeah. You're way more visual yeah, than me. He's, I'm it's not funny. that person. We've kind of <laughs> flip-flopped the gender roles here. Yeah. <laughs> you drink beer. Paul drinks milk. 
Paul wears a dress. <laughs> he drinks whiskey, actually. Whiskey. <laughs> He's a manly fellow. He's a whiskey drinker. Uh, how about phones? Which phones? Uh, this is a silly question, but which? Like, <laughs> is a question no one on earth has nobody ever cares. Asked. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> yeah. case you care, which Guys, phones are going to get the creators update? Oh. People care. Look really? at Twitter right now. It's They're like a crazy? dumpster fire. Really? <laughs> wow. Okay. So I got a list from um, some sources of mine that said, here are the phones that are going to get Windows 10 creators update. And here, and anything not on this list will not. Hmm. So I don't know if this is an accurate list. I asked Microsoft and they would not verify whether it's accurate or not. But there are not many phones on this list. There are like 10 or 11 I'll tell you what's on for Lumia. Lumia 550, the 640, 640 XL, the 650, the 950, and 950 XL. And then the HP Elite X3. There are a couple of Alcatel phones. There's a Vio phone. There's a Lenovo phone. Um, people are screaming on Twitter because they can successfully run the creator's update insider builds on uh, on phones that are much uh, older. By the way, this, this happens every version. It happens every time that a phone version comes out. Right? So by so, the way, the only phone, the only Lumia that you mentioned that wasn't the very latest generation of Lumias was the 640 slash 640 XL. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That is actually fairly astonishing. Yeah. Um, everybody's hmm. like, what about this phone? What about this phone? I'm using Insider on this phone and it's working. It's actually working better than anniversary update. Oh, isn't update. that interesting? Um, so... <sighs> I'll tell you what I don't know. I don't know if this is the complete list. I don't know if they'll add to this list. I don't know why the phones that are on this list are on it and why the ones that are not on it are not. I don't know anything, people. So stop beating me up on Twitter about this. <laughs> you're never, I'm just telling you're never you what I heard. Good, you're never going to get like a good I'm, answer to, to why. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but, you know, so here's what here's what Microsoft did say when I asked. I, of course, I asked them about this and they said, you know, as with previous Windows updates, what what happens when we pull phones out of the um, list is they may not have updated drivers. The OEMs may no longer want to support them. Mobile carriers may no longer want to support them. It may vary on country. It may vary on a lot of things. Um, that's all they're saying. They're saying they're going to update the product lifecycle page soon. And, you know, Microsoft said that April 25th is when the Windows 10 creators update for mobile will start rolling out. So, I assume they're going to say something about this by then or then. And I am sure that whatever answer they give will satisfy all Windows Phone users and we have exactly. nothing to worry about. Oh, man. Yeah. So, sorry, yeah. I don't know the answer. Um, <laughs> they they, they, they have. Me. <laughs> there is precedent for, you know, remember they added support for the icon over time after initially not supporting it on, what, 1511, I think it was. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. you know, I don't know this off the top of my head, but I bet if you were to go back and look at the supported phone list for 1511, 1607, now 1703, what you would see is a, a contraction of the total number of supported phones. Right. Plus, you know, it, people don't want to hear this, but phones don't have a long life cycle of support by any vendor, pretty much, right? So. A yeah. phone that's two years old, it may work great and you want to keep it around, but the vendors don't want you to keep it around <laughs> and the carriers don't want you to keep them around. Yeah, so and if, they're and, gonna, and to, it's to like planned fair, obsolescence. Microsoft, it is yeah. literally planned obsolescence. Yeah. But but if you want to stick with your phone for whatever reason, um, they do give you the tools, especially the Lumias and some other devices as well, to go back to the factory image and then you can go through the normal update process to get whatever updates were available for that version. You can do it for Windows 10 or Windows 8.1, uh, mm -hmm. depending on the phone version you have. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it, I, I, it really kind of stinks that if you're in the Insider program and you're on some new version of Windows 10 and you actually have to wipe the thing know. to go back. I, I agree that's not ideal yeah. uh, for all right. the obvious reasons. But at least you can, you, know, you can keep using it if you want to. You can. And we don't know how long you'll be able to keep using um, the one of the insider previews on your phone, it may be a really long time that you can continue to use it. And so, you yeah. know, saying that Microsoft won't roll out the creator's update to your phone, that doesn't really impact you if you're an insider and you're happily running creator's update. It will at some point, I would think, but we don't know when that will be. So, yeah. So there. I, 
I just expect the Windows Phone community to handle this with their usual sense of grace. <laughs> you know, I think at this I, I point, understand. people who have bought Windows Phones feel like Microsoft owes them something. You know? They do. And they feel like they're being dumped on relentlessly yeah. and they yeah. bet on Microsoft and Microsoft's abandoning right. them. I right. get it. Uh, guys, uh, and you, I feel I'm bad. sorry, but if, you wanna, if you want to make that argument, you got to get in line because there's a bunch of media center users <laughs> in front of you in Zoom. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah, true. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, I, I mean, it happens all the time. Whenever a product is discontinued, it, the sad thing is this isn't a discontinued product. It's just, a, it's just an abandoned product. That's, <laughs> I shouldn't laugh Leo, when I say abandoned, that. Abandoned, no. but not forgotten. But not forgotten. Beloved. Definitely not forgotten. And I got to tell you, when uh, when I, you know, I'm as a Kin user, I really am mad at Microsoft <laughs> that they haven't kept that up to date either. Oh, man. Oh, Kin. <laughs> Okay. Windows me Ken was a good world. Ken was a good phone. I didn't have Ken was a great phone. It was idea. honestly, it really was. I like the premise a lot. The pricing, <clears throat> uh, the data plane you had to get through Verizon were screwed up, but that wasn't Microsoft's fault. No, but um, no, yeah, bad so, timing. So. <laughs> Punter Joe says we should call this Windows as a disservice. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh boy! Oh. That, who said that? Burn. That's, that's, that is. <laughs> That's brilliant, and I am <laughs> shamed that I never thought of that. Windows, uh, 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 you'll be seeing that in a column near you someday. someday oh, that soon. is. Uh, who said that? Punter Joe is his handle. That is beautiful. Nice job, Punter Joe. <laughs> yep. Paul will be Paul will be stealing your <laughs> shamelessly <laughs> stealing your Windows is a disservice. Windows is a disservice or WAD, which even has WAD. a great acronym. WAD. Another WAD. We used to have WAD, didn't we? What was yeah, WAD? there was something that was WAD. That's good. It's really good. Windows is a data center. <laughs> yeah, something like something that. Something like that. Our show today brought to you by My Mattress. I slept, I you know, I hate, don't you hate people who yeah. come to work and say, I slept so well last night. I had a just a wonderful night's sleep. And you want to go, <laughs> well, I did. And instead of getting angry, get a new mattress. Get the Casper mattress. It is, uh, this is a revelation. You know, what happened was Casper took, you know, the guys who started Casper, great people, took a look at what was going on in the mattress world and the in the hooray, you know, if you've if you've gone to get a premium mattress in a mattress store lately, it's thousands of dollars. I mean, thousands and thousands of they're they're like it's like a it's hugely expensive. It costs more than your TV. And I think they saw this as a real opportunity for disruption in the uh, in the internet sphere. So they went to the drawing board and they said, how can we make a great mattress? We'll make it in America and we'll do something kind of interesting. We will not sell it in a showroom, but we'll sell it direct. That means we're going to have to have an amazing return policy. They do, and I'll explain that in a second. And then they researched, and these are the six most important factors. Firmness, density, rebound speed, Airflow, that's a big one for me because I don't like a mattress that's hot. And this breeze is great. Transition temperature, that's another big one. A lot of the, these premium mattresses use materials that are hard <laughs> when they're cold and soft when they're warm. That's not a, it's not a good thing. And then, of course, odor. And you, don't, you, know, you want your mattress to smell fresh the day you get it. And, that's, and they solved all of these by doing bunches of prototypes, 100-plus formulations, Five, over 3,000 hours of testing, 108 prototypes, and they came up with an amazing mattress, the Casper mattress. It's made of supportive memory foams for a sleep surface with just the right sink and just the right bounce. You want both, right? You want it to be firm enough to support your back so you don't feel you know achy when you get up, but you don't want it to be so firm that your hips or your other jutting out points aren't, aren't you know comfortable. And then the breathable design, I, I I know I'm going on and on about this, but it sleeps cool to help regulate your temperature through the night. And that is a big deal. And this is going to last a long time. It's going to give you great support forever. No springs, none of that lumpiness. You can buy it online and you can buy it risk-free. Instead of going to a mattress store where you really don't get a chance to, to test the mattress, Casper is it lets you test it at home, in effect, you have 100 days to try your Casper mattress. If at any time in the first 100 days you say, ah, not for me, call them up. They will come and get it. They will actually, I think they donate it, and they will refund you every penny. Every penny. 
South by Southwest, big news. CNBC says Casper won South by Southwest this year. We took over uh, Austin with a local hotel partnership and a roving nap -mo nap mobile, and it got a lot of people. They had a nap mobile. <laughs> I love Casper. You will, too. I want you to go to casper.com slash windows, C-A-S-P-E-R.com slash windows. Uh, and you can save $50 towards your mattress purchase if you use the offer code windows. Some terms and conditions apply. $50 off offer code windows. Free shipping, free returns in the U.S. and Canada. And a 100-day return policy means there's absolutely no risk. I, I, you know, I know there's a little bit of a you know, speed bump to go over to get a mattress untested but i have heard from so many people now i get emails and tweets all the time wow you were right this is a great mattress it is a great mattress for a fraction of the price because you're buying direct from the u.s factory casper.com slash windows use the offer code windows you'll save even more paul therott mary joe foley we're talking windows on windows weekly and it's time to talk about i don't know something oh it went blank for a second the big <laughs> hardware event. Dun, 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 dun. Actually, it's interesting because Apple, <laughs> it looks like isn't going to have a hardware event in the spring. Yeah. Because they kind of slipstreamed some stuff. And then, in really unprecedentedly yesterday, they brought five journalists in and apologized, said mm -hmm. we screwed up the Mac Pro and we're not going to have a new one until next year. I mean, I've never heard of a company doing this. <laughs> uh, in effect, saying of Apple apologizing. I, Apple of all yeah. people, right? I know. We yeah, you know what? We blew it, Leo. We got them right where we want them. <laughs> it is an opportunity. <laughs> Actually, uh, we were talking about that on Windows Weekly yesterday. This is an opportunity for Microsoft, big time, bigly, yep. bigly, bigly. Well, so where's Microsoft's guessed. big event? Right. Right. So my guess was once we saw all that stuff coming out about Apple and all the reports. I'm like, okay, so today is going to be the day Microsoft sends out invites for this. By the way, we didn't make a mistake and we've got a new one just for you. I know. Like, you're like, okay, guys, do this. No. Day goes by, so, nothing. So good at communicating, <laughs> those guys. Oh, they got to go for um, the, you know what? They don't have the blood lust. You need to go for the jugular now. Get them while they're or, down. Or, or they don't have anything. Here's a possibility. Are they not ready? Yeah. Yeah. Um, walking cat, you know, our buddy, the walking cat today, he posts on Twitter, Hmm. April event becomes May event question mark. Oh, let me ask you a question about that because I, yes. I had this conversation with Brad earlier today. Yep. We have known for quite some time that they were going to have a spring hardware event. We have. And that's the way we've described it. Spring. Yep. Um, Chris Capicella I said on this show, spring was a better time that, you know, for launching yep. hardware, right? Um, it, this is the part where I need your help because me, you know, the April thing to me was a little bit of a, um, Projection? combination of things. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yes. That we knew, you know, in other words, at some point we realized 1703 would be shipping in April. They had a, a windows 10 event in October mm -hmm. at which they talked about surface. Maybe it makes sense that they will have an event at the same time. And so April kind of became the thing, but it is, mm -hmm. wasn't it never more than that? It was yeah. just us, you know, not just you and I, but I mean, everyone yeah. kind of collectively putting the pieces together and saying, well, April makes sense. But, you know, spring goes from the end of March to the end of June. I mean, it could yeah. be anywhere. I know. I never called right? this an April event in anything I've written because I, I wasn't sure it was an April event. Um, okay. I, I kept hearing spring. I Then I knew some people were assuming or guessing that April 11th might be the day of the event. Like, hey, they're going to roll out creators update. Why not make that your event um, date also least, for your yeah, any new there's surfaces. No, there's no right? event on the 11th. I can tell you that <laughs> at least not beyond like a local event. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, so uh, that was they, my they guess for a while. That. I'm like, I mean, they told maybe, me that explicitly. Oh, they did. Okay. I was like, maybe April 11th, you know? So I, I never knew what month this would be for sure. I just kept hearing spring. Um, so now I don't even know, like walking cat saying maybe May, I, I don't know the month. I don't even, I don't know the day or the month, but I still believe there is going to be a hardware launch. I've seen some people saying, no, there's not going to be one or it's going to be a build. Um, I think there's a separate Surface hardware event that is not at build. And now you say also not April 11th. So 
Yeah. And yeah. knowing Microsoft, they'll make it as inconvenient right up against Build, where it's in New York City like two days before we have to be in Seattle. Oh, do they not want to jump on what would be, I think, a good publicity train if they did it today just because they don't want to get pinned down to a date? I don't know. Because they could say, well, we're going to do it May 15th. I mean, they don't have to say we're going to do it April 20th. I know. They don't have to say I anything, but I, I, I agree it's with Mary Joy. It, right. It is really odd in the face of this Apple weirdness not to pounce on that, you know? Right. I mean, how amazing would it have been as <laughs> those ridiculous stories came out for Microsoft to tease a date? I know. I don't think Microsoft knew in advance that Apple had pre-briefed these people. I'm I'm betting they did not know because it was all yeah. under NDA. Sure. And I so bet I think it's probably hard. A, a contingent of those guys who were like, oh, thank God. <laughs> yeah, I think I don't think Microsoft's good at turning on a dime, right? Maybe like, that's just it. They're just they're meeting now to talk about it. They're probably they're, meeting today, going, yeah. "Oh shoot, we should have done that yesterday." And in the meeting, what they say is, "Hey, <laughs> um, last night, I don't know if anyone paid attention to this, but we hit an iceberg. Should we do anything? <laughs> should we about do anything? That? About that? Yeah. <laughs> do we have lifeboats? I don't know. Do we? I don't know. I can't remember. We do. Do we have enough? Could somebody count them? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what do you mean? But they're all is gone? this is this not stunning that Apple says? We designed the Mac Pro. They haven't updated the Mac Pro. They're top of the line Macintosh. They haven't updated it for three years. I bought one. I'm a little no, more bitter than the any average of their person. Macs. I mean, I, well, they I, update the they uh, no. Well, they've updated their Macs, but uh, not, not uh, like no. But, in other words, no, well, but the Mac Pro. This, they were st still mentioning Aperture on the website. They haven't not update. There was nothing for three years. Nothing. Zilch. Hmm. Right. On their top line, three it started at three thousand dollars for that tube, mm -hmm. that cylinder. I was, I mean, and it it's never worked. Box. Yeah, it never worked well for me, and I, I just really felt betrayed. Speaking yeah. of betrayal, and uh, then they say at this, at this briefing, uh, Lance Ulanoff from Mashable is uh, there. Ina Freed from Axios, mm -hmm. she's now at Axios, is there. Um, uh, John Gruber, who's, of course, an Apple blogger at uh, Daring Fireball. Um, but they say, you know, <laughs> we painted ourselves in the corner with this trash can Mac, you know, this big innovation. We could not upgrade it. When we designed it, we designed it thinking that the future was dual graphics cards. Did it turned out not to be that these single graphics cards got better and better and better. We designed it, the, th we're th the thermal, the cooling, we designed in such a way we could not... We could not upgrade it with more modern mm. components. So, now when they figured this out, I don't know. So, we're <laughs> throwing this design out, and we'll have something for you not this year. Mm. Yeah. They didn't even say next year. They said not this year. Yeah. It is amazing. It, it's amazing. <clears throat> it, uh, uh, is it what? Huh? Does it take that long yeah. to figure out you blew it and it, to design a new thing? As a, re as a reporter, and I, Mary Jo, I think, will agree to this, I find it a little odd the questions that were not asked, you know? Um, and I suspect that the agreement that these guys had to get to get into this little lab and so they could see all the secret stuff was you're not asking us about the MacBook Air, you're not asking us about the Mac Mini, you're not asking us about the iMac. We're talking about this one thing. You can't take any photos. We'll give you photos. We'll give you the, the thoughtful Apple executive photos where they look really serious. Yeah, Apple took them notice, not anybody else. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You don't want any any real life in there. Um, I I just find that whole thing to be a little gross. You know? Know. Oh, it's you know, very that Apple. Happened, that's, it's very Apple. It's happened to us before. Like sometimes you get an interview with somebody and they're like, okay, here are the ground rules if you want to take yeah. this. You can't ask what do you about do? X, Y, and Z. <laughs> no, but you know what? You're talking about something where you walk in the room. I, those guys yeah. knew about this in advance before they f flew or drove out to wherever this place was. Yeah. And yeah. of course they agreed because it's Apple and Apple never does this kind of thing. And of course you're going right. to do that. But I just... I, I, well, it's interesting the five they chose, you know. It's well, very the, By the way, yeah. fascinating because in the, Steve Jobs, for all of his futurist, <laughs> you know, blah, 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 was an old school guy who liked yeah. old school no media. Walt Mossberg. His, mm -mm. No Walt well, Mossberg. No New York Times. Times. No Brian X. Chen. Right. It's New York Times. No, it's Wall no Street Verge, Journal. It's no Verge. But that's the other thing, right? You would think these days it would be CNET, The Verge. No, know. it's not. It's it's weird sites, like really weird yeah. sites. Oh, blogs. Yeah. Uh, blogs. Mash, but, yeah, yeah. Come on. I mean, and not, like and not really the, the team makers, you know, not the deans yeah. of, of tech journalism or even no. of Apple journalism. No. And that's odd. the thing. I, I think they wanted people 
who were comfortable not asking hard questions, that they, they, they wanted people who would, would accept the party line, that the point of you being here is to communicate what we're going to tell you. Can you agree to that? Yes. Because mm. there, were, there were no hard questions asked. None. Yeah. Ina Freed was the closest. I mean, Ina's a true journalist. Yep. And she yeah. would ask, I think she even did ask some little more challenging yeah. questions than the others. I know it's hard to know, too. We don't know what they asked. There, the, yeah, nobody well, wrote a transcript. <laughs> well, Gruber did well, a little bit. That's what but, I mean. But there that's may, what, what we don't know is, were there off-the-record comments? Yeah. Was I'm there sure on the record that. and off the record? You know, it, this is, boy, I mean. I know. It's it's very it's interesting. unprecedented. Well, uh, you know, although, uh, you know, I, I, you point out, like I I remember we wanted to interview uh, uh, Bill Gates at CES one year. And they said, well, yeah. you have to submit all your questions and we have to approve yep. them. And I said, no. Yeah. Right. I said, no, I don't do that. That's not. Yeah. So it, companies try this kind of thing. They do. I mean, Apple is like they're an entity unto themselves. I mean, virtually anyone probably would have agreed to this kind of thing, I guess. I don't know. Or maybe not. Maybe that's why that's who was there. I, I don't know. Mm. But I, I this is such a it's such a bizarre and gross way to do this. <laughs> and on the one hand, it's so unlike anything Apple's ever done. And yet it's so typical for this company. Like it's so weird. Oh, but it's, it's also, I mean, untypical in the sense that they it made a massive admission of failure. Yeah. they. I mean, this is a failure. You're top of the line. Yeah. Flagship computer. Yeah. Unupdatable think, after three okay. years. But here's the thing. I mean, come on. I, uh, they One of the little data points they provided to everyone was we're approaching 100 million active Mac users. What What percentage of those guys are running a Mac Pro? Five, like less. I mean, I, I, they're their best customers in some ways, right? I think that's maybe part of the reason for the public admission. But this is not the mainstream part of the Mac user base either. And there are mainstream Macs that need to be updated that they're not discussing at all. And by the way, mm -hmm. they're supposedly releasing new iPad Pros any day. The machines that are going to replace PCs and Macs. How do, you, how do you position all that stuff? And you don't. The answer is you don't. You don't. You yeah. don't. You don't. You don't ask those questions. Nobody asks those questions. I don't well, know. I think I think we Paul and I were talking about this between ourselves the other day because I said, you know, if the, if Microsoft ever did something like this and say there were five of us at the table, hopefully we would be there. Um, but who knows in the new world? Um, <laughs> sure. sure. Uh, you know, the, I, I think I, the one. Yeah. We, there are certainly the some difference. people who would be happy to tell their story. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, there, no there's sure. one big difference. And I think I will say this about the Microsoft press, the people who we among us, you know, we call us, ourselves the Microsoft press. Mm -hmm. I think we're pretty hard on Microsoft. And As a I group. think I, I think we're pretty tough on them. And I think if if Microsoft had come to the table and go, you know what, guys, we can't update Surface Studio. We really screwed this up. And like, we're gonna have to start over. I don't think we would have started a blog post with good news. No, I know. Well, I know. It's, right? I, that's, it's crazy. <laughs> I got a little right. heat because I called John Gruber the uh, Fox News of Mac reporting. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> but he's the one Yikes, who started with dude. good I, news. I, 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 yeah. I, yeah. He please, buried the I, lead, which, it was, I mean, the, no, the yeah. news story that's, is Apple admits <laughs> they screwed up badly. That's all you need to know about that guy. Yeah. I, I, look. I, I like I John, by the way. I just want to say I like John a lot. Okay. Uh, isn't it a personal slight? He's an incredible partisan. But he's a little individual. partisan, sure. A little, yeah. yeah. So, but we're getting off of personality. I, I, yeah. The one thing I would yeah. say is on the Microsoft PR side, those guys may not like some of the things I've written, but they're credible enough to want to discuss it and to... I think appreciate the point of it, you know. In other words, I've had very interesting <laughs> conversations with Microsoft uh, people high up at Microsoft, people high up at PR at Microsoft, about some of the opinions I have or some of the things I've written, and it's always been respectful and professional and cordial, and they accept that feedback and that pushback. And I just don't see that being part of the Apple news cycle or a part of the Apple. PR feedback cycle. You know, they yeah. would never welcome people that credible into their inner circle because they don't want people asking hard questions. They want people who communicate their marketing standpoint. And I don't see that as the job of press of any kind, regardless mm -hmm. of whether you're talking about mainstream press or tech bloggers or whatever. 
Yeah, Stephen Sandoff, who's listening to us, that some of these questions were asked by various members. Like he said, the mm-hmm. Mac Mini question was asked. Our Mac, I think, um, touch screens yeah. were asked. Yeah. So there were things that were asked, but sure. it, again, it's hard to know. It's hard to know what the rules were going in unless people can say that publicly who were invited. And, and almost certainly if, they can't, right? Apple's, probably not. Uh, Apple said you're going to sign I, I, this paper. These are the ground guessing, rules, and you may not yeah. reveal what you've Phil, Phil agreed Phil Schiller to. said something like, we want to be as transparent as possible with our professional customers. What, are you kidding me? No. You are the and least transparent a, company well, on earth. And this how, isn't how transparent. All you're saying is, oh, no, don't worry. We're going to have a new one. It won't be this year. That's not transparent. Yeah, I forget who That's said crazy. this. Somebody said, oh, I think it was um, the New York Times reporter, Nick Wingfield. I think he said, Apple's hmm. rediscovered the value of vaporware. And that's what this is, it right? Is. It's, it's a vaporware like, announcement. You're, st- you're stalling the market. Right. You're like, guys, don't go buy a Surface Studio. We've oh. got something coming. Yeah. Sorry. That's way, exactly that, how I interpreted it. That's exactly yeah. right. And that's yeah. why I wrote the line in the notes, is this a victory for Surface? And the answer is yes, because I, I've kind of doubted the whole you know, switcher. Apple switcher thing. And I'm still me not 100% convinced. But this at least shows me that Apple is worried about it. Uh, because that is uh, basically uh, messaging to their pro customers, stick with us. Mm. You know, your patience will be rewarded. Not yeah. this year. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but but in the future. Yeah. I think that's what I mean, it says. I mean, if Microsoft had done this, again, if Microsoft had said, guys, we don't have anything for you with the Surface Book 2 <laughs> right now, but next year, everybody would be all over them, right? They'd be like, what are you guys doing? You know? <laughs> yeah. It's did you have a stroke? What did you just say? It's mind-boggling. You know, like, yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> and this is the guy, Phil Schiller, sitting there, the guy who said, can't innovate my ass when he showed, right. revealed the trash can. Right. Um, yeah. <laughs> it, it is re- it, the reality distortion field lives, and it doesn't live in a good way. It, I have to say, yeah. this oh, is bunker right. mentality. This is not good. This is, uh, uh, Apple makes good products. I mean, they really do. I, I And it gets lost in some, in some ways for me because the hubris stuff for me is so tough. It's really it, they're toxic. so unlikable as a group, as a company, as a set of executives or whatever. However you want to personalize it, they're just so non-humble and so ugh, like it's just awful. You're and like say the Duke what you will about college Microsoft. basketball, Paul. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> you, now I'm going to hear from Mary, all the Duke way, fans. <laughs> people, does, people don't know this. Mary Jo's been throwing out sports references all week. I, know, and I don't know yeah. what's going on over this there. This is weird. What's go- Rattle and hum is what's going on. No, you know why? Because I'm I'm going to have a TV in my new apartment. And so I've been like <gasps> investigating. Ready. What? Like, She's what getting, do I want to have for TV? Right? She bought she bought a book called Basketball for Dummies. <laughs> so she, <laughs> wait, you, wait a minute. No, no, no. You're bar- no, no. Wait. You're getting a TV? <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's coming with the apartment. The people who left it who moved out. Oh, it's not like so you're I buying have a TV. A TV. <laughs> well, a, she's a, she's buying an expensive home that has a TV in it. It's it's. I have, it's a, like, it's I like have a TV. Not no, I'm not going to go out and buy a TV. Why would I waste my money on a TV? But, yeah. Okay. Good. Now I'm relieved. Yeah. No. <laughs> well, you got to have something <laughs> to connect the Xbox to. Uh, dude. They no. didn't leave an Xbox <laughs> as well, did they? No. No. <laughs> no. They are not gamers. <laughs> Uh, um, anyway yeah i thought this apple thing i'm glad to talk to 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 somebody not in the apple press corps about this because it was puzzling to me i just but you you have your regulars on mac break weekly and i I assume and hope that this was alarming in some ways to those guys not as much as it was to me i i oh it was quite alarming to me yeah. Um, there, there's a level maybe, of acceptance on that side that I just have a little bit of trouble. Yeah. With. Well, we have, uh, I, I, you know, and I, I have this too. We have a lot of reverence for Apple, and um, based on past experience, and but so based on past experience is why you shouldn't. Right. No. 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 I mean, it's you know we don't want to have the "what have you done for me lately" mentality either. But we're trying no, to. No. But but uh, I long ago stopped giving them a free pass, mm-hmm. and. Um, mm-hmm. I think they do continue to get a free pass among the Apple uh, stalwarts. I, you know, the I, people I, really good. love Apple and really, you know what? We know what it is. We want Apple to succeed and survive. And they, well, they're the biggest the face, company on earth. In the face of well, <laughs> yeah, but in the face of increasing okay. evidence that they just have lost their mojo, it's yes, hard. It's a hard thing to admit. Yeah. Uh, uh, we hope it's not so. Okay. Yep. We hope it's not so. But this is the worst evidence yet that lost their mojo. My God. Three years down the pike. I mean, I spent three grand on this machine. 
I know. Three years down the... I mean, I knew it wasn't upgradable when I bought it, but I didn't know Apple couldn't upgrade it either. Yeah. It is, ra yeah, it's rather <laughs> astonishing. Yeah. I mean, are they a company that designs computers? I mean, <laughs> is this their first computer? I mean... <laughs> what? Well, I mean, and by the way, uh, when you look at the pro market and those giant towers that you can open the side and expand the innards. Well, I've been stuff. begging them to bring that back for uh, at least a year. Yeah, now. I mean, was yeah. did that thing work too well or something? Yeah, it worked I mean, why, too well. Why it was you... too exactly what the pro market wanted. <laughs> yeah, I, why? You know, we don't need thinner, smaller, That's lighter, stupid. whatever. I mean, it's going under the desk. Yeah. Who cares what it looks like? Sure. Yep. <laughs> Mistakes were made. <laughs> Things happen. Things happen. <laughs> On a lighter note, uh, mm. I do want to thank Brad Sams uh, for his most recent tweet. Uh, I, pr I presume this is his daughter. Oh, this oh. is, by the way, I, yeah, I showed this to my wife. <laughs> that was the best. I <laughs> so for those of you listening. I showed this to my wife. <laughs> it's a, a very short video of him tossing a ball to his daughter, hits her in the face, she falls over. <laughs> She's what, at a six, seven? Uh, and no, the tweet is, we will go for the educational scholarship. So my reply to this was, maybe she'll marry well. <laughs> no, she's adorable. That's adorable. We're not knocking his daughter. She's awesome. She's, she's awesome. She's the one who designed on the Surface Studio the other day. Ah, she's there she's you go. pretty professional. There you go. I don't want to be cruel. It's just, it's one of those. This is okay. a really funny video. It's, if you've, anybody's had kids has had this experience. This is, <laughs> yeah. this is whoops. <laughs> this is right in the face. It wasn't a think fast moment. I think he, they were actually playing cat but <laughs> yes <laughs> and then and then somebody tweets on the plus side your lawn looks great <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I really am annoyed at how he is like one month ahead of us when it comes to spring oh, oh, man. where does he live? Where does Brad live? live yeah that is gorgeous is he in California yeah. no he's in Ohio oh. Ohio <laughs> Ohio's a very green state it rains a lot yeah yeah <laughs> All right, I, do, I wanted to show something light to take us uh, off, <laughs> off that subject. Um, so Microsoft unknown hardware event. You know they there's could. Another, would they still get the other hardware event? They'd still get the benefit if they announced a hardware event tomorrow. Maybe maybe they're just. They would. Yeah. But there is a hardware event tomorrow. Oh, what is it? Guys, I don't know if you've heard, but tomorrow at um, six a.m. Pacific, Microsoft is going to reveal the specs of Project Scorpio. Oh, not kidding. Not oh, kidding. Paul and I are getting up early. It's awesome. it's going to be um, an exclusive. Speaking of access journalism, it's an exclusive that they have given to Eurogamer, and that's the way they are going to reveal this. Eurogamer. Eurogamer. Do I know who these people are? No, I said to Paul, who are these people? <laughs> Paul, do you know who Eurogamer are? Yes, I do. I assured her that they were credible and it made sense, but I still think it's gross that they are giving this important thing to one publication. I mean, that's weird. There, are, yes, I, I. It's very weird. So when a company does that, this is okay. This is okay. Let me explain to mm -hmm. the lay person why this is upsetting. Because I think it, the it, first thing you're to say, oh, you're just jealous. It's not you. No, 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 no. That's not it. Why would it be me? When it comes, well, or whoever, right? Why would, that's yeah. what I always yeah. say. Well, it wouldn't be me anyway. Yeah. Right. Um, but the, the, one of the problems that one has with this is it's a, it's a tit, it's presumably a tit for tat in return for yeah. good coverage. We will give you an exclusive. So that's problem number one. It's effectively a bribe and it's a big bribe. If you're a blog, that's huge. I, there are, there are bigger problems than this. I mean, by, by giving precedence to one of a group of entities that cover this market, you are, in effect, giving them an unfair advantage over the others. Yes. Um, playing favorites like that is is actually extremely uncool. You're artificially coloring the market. And I, yeah. I actually think that's unethical. I agree. And there's even the supposition yeah. that uh, it's, a, it's a payback uh for something you know that, that there's this is yeah you you, you know you tell everybody yeah. you tell everybody not, you have a press it's, release it's not, yeah. it's you embargo okay it that. you say everybody you can't write about this till noon yeah. uh and that's how you do it this is I weird mean, pe people get exclusives you know like you'll see bloomberg get yeah. exclusives on things you'll sure. see people get satya nadella i got him once and nobody else got him i mean it's hard to it's hard to know what the ground rules are for this thing right i i the way this is being done, though, is pretty odd because it is odd. Yeah. Here's here's how it usually works. If somebody gets an exclusive, you don't even tell the public this person has it. 
It's just like, surprise, here it is on the day. This instead is right. Microsoft promoting that these guys are going to have this at this time. Yeah, everybody so go really to Eurogamer at 6 a.m. Right. I mean, it's so, <laughs> yeah, I mean, so, you know, it's so odd. the guys right for IGN and whatever, you know, Polygon and these other places yeah. are all going to have to head over to Eurogamer.net or whatever. Yeah. I mean, like, well, I, it's, it's just strange. Yeah. Yeah. And let's admit it, part of it is a chauvinism on our part. It's Eurogamer. Really? <laughs> actually, that doesn't bother me. <laughs> no, no, it's who's Digital Foundry because that's who actually is the ones that have it. I guess. It, I bet it's are they part of your somebody game? in the chat room. Ken, is, yeah. Ken Hess is saying uh, they're pretty much the best at evaluating the performance of hardware. Okay. So it may be what they've done is they've given Digital Foundry mm -hmm. a um, the actual Scorpio. And they or, said, or, you could test yeah. this, and you could test oh, wow. this for a week or They're 10 a days. They're hardware source, so they can yeah. say, hey, they do benchmarks. Really is. They do big-time yeah. big, big oh, huh. benchmarks. So okay. that, okay, so knowing that now, which I didn't know, um, that that might excuse it. Because that's yeah. that's now not a press release, but we gave first the first version of a Scorpio to Digital Foundry, and here's the unbiased third-party test results. That's yeah, different. Which, by the way, is what you say at the Microsoft event, where you have announced all this stuff in front of everybody. Not right giving yeah. them the chance to do it for you. Yeah. But the whole, the supposedly the reason they did this was so that at E3, they're just going to focus on games, oh, right? And they don't want the like spec stuff to get in the done. way of the right. games. Right. Hmm. Yeah. I don't want to get that out of the, what? <laughs> well, no, E3 <laughs> is more, uh, no, no, that no makes way. sense. Cause E3 is more, uh, an event that the gamers will watch to see what the titles will be and what they'll look like. Oh, listen to I, this. I mean, the, no. Okay. Listen to this. Justin Pitta says that publication is notoriously pro, pro PlayStation right. and always poo poos right. Xbox. The, well. the, this is what uh, J Judah Zuck says in our okay. chat room. Digital Foundry is considered more. very credible and they've been bashing Xbox okay. One. Okay. Well, by the way, they're not alone in that. I mean, I, I didn't um, put this into the notes, but there's, you know, there's a, a big kind of meme going around that it's like already over for the Xbox. Like, right. Um, if you think about what happened with the last generation of consoles, the Xbox 360 was ahead of the PlayStation 3 for the entire lifetime of the console. And then right at the end, PlayStation 3 blew by them. The point being that PlayStation 3 was a, a close third. But this generation, uh, Microsoft's not even close. They're being outsold by at least two to one. And we are closing in on four years now that this console has been in the market. It's not even close. Hmm. And you know, uh, this maybe this is their moonshot at trying to change perception. Yeah, guys, I'll just say I've already made sports references and talked gaming <laughs> on the show. You broke a I was game. Say, I'm dropping by the, way, the mic. How has dropping no mic. evidence, <laughs> no ev uh, no evidence, no no attention been brought to the fact that Mary Jo just introduced a gaming title? And by the way, I want to point out on your website today. Let me find this because I'm sure you're going to discuss this later. But I just want to say. You wrote about something called Project Sopris or whatever that thing is. And of course, come up. Yes. I read that as Project Scorpio and I got so excited. <laughs> Finally, <laughs> Mary Jo is writing about, nope, something else. When are we something getting a Scorpio? Better. How soon are we getting Scorpio? Is holiday, right? Holiday. Oh, holiday. Oh, so this is really early. It's happening. Yeah. It's yeah. happening. All right. So well, I have to, I'm going to step back and say I understand now why Microsoft did this. Knowing now what I know about Digital Foundry and Eurogamer, I apologize. This actually does make sense. And I'm going to say, step back and say, screw you guys. I'm going home. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm really excited about Scorpio. I can't wait to get one. Yeah. You know? I, I got a four. I, my 4K TV with an Xbox One S and the uh, UHD disc is a great combination. But, I, you know, I would like to see games in UHD and 4K UHD. Well, That's by the way, this I'm is the trick. About. In other words, if this organization can come out and say, by the way, this hardware is the real deal. They're going to be able to do 4K gaming. Yep. They're going to be able to yep. do super high res VR. I, I mean, that would and maybe you, help justify it. But and you need to say that before E3, so that when because otherwise you say at E3, I look at these great 4K games, and everybody goes, "Yeah, well, let me see what it looks like on a Scorpio." Mm. Yeah. Okay. So that's not unreasonable. I think that, that you do do hardware first to say, "Look, look, it does do this, and it looks great from an independent third party." Yep, Even yep. better to choose one that hates Xbox, right? Or this is critical yeah. of Xbox. Yeah. If you can win them over, uh, then then the gaming crowd goes, oh, I'm interested. Mm -hmm. Maybe maybe Microsoft does have something special. <clears throat> I'll never understand what happened to the Xbox One. It's such great hardware. And um, I, 
I, you know, it being behind the PlayStation by 10% or 25% or something, you know, maybe. Um, I'll never understand this gap. And, and the explanations I've seen for it have never made any sense to me. People still talk about the the launch gaffes they made like 18 months before the console even came out. And it's mm -hmm. like, guys, you got to get over stuff. Like, you can't possibly <laughs> be telling me you still won't buy an Xbox One because some guy who's long gone made a crack about people on su uh, submarines that have to be online so they yeah, can't get an that. Xbox One. It can't be that. It can't. <laughs> Although the gaming, you know... Yep. Community is very tight knit, and uh, Leo, a bad reputation. The, the Xbox 360. Angry. There, there probably isn't an Xbox 3. There were 80 something million of these people, all of whom sent their console back to Microsoft at least once. The only problem they had doing that was when am I going to get it back? No, that's true. The Red Ring. Right? You're talking about Red the, Ring of the, Death. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this was like the I sent back at least 80 of these things. Like, I this has to have been the most loyal group of customers on earth outside of Apple, you know, let's say. I I, I fully expected. And Sony, does anyone, does no one remember how terrible Sony is as a company? I mean, I, it just amazes me that the, the delta between the two platforms I is crazy. I, 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 I just don't understand it. I know. It's interesting. Yeah. Uh, Android is number one. This is another story that'll cheer Paul up. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, so I've seen a lot of doom and gloom stuff for, around this. Um, I actually tried to ignore it for a couple of days. Um, Stack Counter is actually not a great source of this information. But regardless, we all know this was going to happen. I, I, my point here is only that this was always going to happen. Remember, the reason we're in the mobile first, cloud first world is that PCs as a computing platform are a distant, well, actually, they're second now, but they're a, uh, a minority player in the overall personal computer device market well behind smartphones. Android is 80-something percent of smartphones. I mean, you know, you don't have to be strong in the math department to understand that Android Android usage obviously is going to uh, surpass that of Windows, obviously. And so it's happening this year. If it didn't just happen, it's going to happen. This is always going to happen. Um, there's an equally important milestone for Android that's going to happen this year as well, by the way, which is that uh, the money earned through the Google Play Store from apps, games, and other services will surpass that of Apple's App Store sometime in 2017 as well. And um, Apple correctly uh, cites their economic engine that is the iTunes or the App Store, whatever they call it. Um, and so that's actually a big deal. Now, granted, Android needed a lot more customers and a lot more devices to make that happen because those people aren't rich, like everyone owns an iPhone, but <laughs> or at least is excited to spend money in the App Store. Um, but it's happening. And so I think this is the this kind of Android ascendancy or Android dominance, whatever you want to call it, was always going to happen, right? I mean, there's nothing you can do about it. So it is, it is what it is, as my father would say. Yeah, and it's not even apples to apples. I mean, yeah, we're talking a mobile phone versus yeah. a desktop operating system. I mean, iPads also beat Macs, I mean, by a long Yeah, shot, I, I so. said that's an interesting fact. Um, despite the fact that iPad sales have fallen year over year for 12 or 13 consecutive quarters over three years, they still outsell Macs, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> and so, yeah. you know, people like to dump on the iPad or whatever, but it's, you know, there's a sizable user base. Yeah, but, it, you know, it's just different. I mean, I have far more Android phones than I have Windows PCs. Of course I do. Mm. Uh, uh, yeah, right. 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 Well, but this too, is usage, Paul. right? This is not this is not Unisales. It's oh, yeah, usage, this, that's right. right. This is internet usage. Yeah, yeah. actual usage. Well, right. as you say, it's mobile first world. Welcome. Yep. 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 It makes sense. Yep. Yep. How about, okay, this one I thought was really interesting. And I ordered this immediately. Samsung on Wednesday <laughs> announced the Galaxy S8, S8 Plus. They announced a, a continuum-like device called Dex. You dock the phone. Unlike, I don't know, does Continuum use any monitor, mouse, and keyboard, or do you have to use special hardware? Any. Any? any? Okay, because right. it's got an HDMI port, USB port. Same thing with Dex. Yep. Unlike Continuum, Dex has a little fan in it. Was, was, <laughs> the phone gets so hot. <laughs> was Dex the name of the robot in the Buck Rogers TV I think show? it is, Dex, yeah. Mm. They've got Bixby, too, which is their new voice assistant on the S8. So they're Incredible. clearly reading some, uh, <laughs> watching some TV. Yeah, yeah. Um, but... What's interesting is they got Microsoft, well, two things with this new S8 thing. Mm -hmm. One is for Dex, they got Microsoft to create desktop-like versions of the mobile office with windowing and resizable windows, you know. 
And then Microsoft's going to be selling a special version of the uh, S8 in its stores with Microsoft apps on it. Well, as somebody pointed out to me on Twitter, um, you thought Microsoft didn't have a mobile strategy. So <laughs> <laughs> I think that's really interesting. Yeah. 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 And, you know, there's, there's a lot of weird caveats about this thing that's going to be sold in the stores, right? So they're only in brick and mortar Microsoft stores in the U.S., they don't actually come preloaded with the apps. You have to download the apps, right? Yeah, in the and, store. And in the store, right? Because the store people have a special image that they've created that is supposed to work on the Galaxy S8 and S8 Plus. Um, we don't know the whole list of apps. We know there's going to be like Office and OneDrive and Cortana and Outlook. Um, in fact, I think what the phone will end up looking like is what my... Yeah, um, Nexus looks yeah, like. You could which do is that right now. An yeah. Android phone with a bunch of Microsoft yeah. apps on it. Right. Um, so, you know, the, the reason that this is happening impossible is because Microsoft and and, and Samsung, sorry, um, settled a patent agreement oh, um, a couple of years is, this ago. This is part of their agreement. Right. And remember, uh, there were there were remember. apps, well, in part, this is why I think this is happening. And there were, they, part of that agreement was Microsoft apps could be preloaded on Samsung hardware now. Um, because they had settled their patent differences. So I am so, less interested. I, I, I agree with you. The store thing is like, pfft, big deal. It's kind of weird, right? It's no big deal. But I'm very interested in what Microsoft has done for DeX. I ordered a DeX and an S8 Plus, and I'll have it April 21st. So, yeah. uh, But I'm very intrigued by that. Even The Continuum thing in, intrigued me. Uh, but uh, I it's was, a good idea, right? But yeah. the problem is that app platform and the fact that the phone it, by itself is not very useful to most people. And so the Android one is was always going to be more interesting. I, I still think it needs to be a platform thing. In other words, that Google needs to do this, not Samsung. But it's still interesting, right? And yeah. at least on that phone, you can say, well, the phone has everything you want, right? Yeah. And the phone also, I think, and the phone plus Dex, I think, solves a big problem for a, a very large percentage of users, which is, you know, it is mobile first, cloud first. We're doing most stuff on our phone. Every once in a while, I need to work on a document with a keyboard, you know, and a big screen. Mm -hmm. And the solution today from the Google standpoint or Samsung standpoint is, you know, get a Chromebook, use an old Windows computer or something like this. And this gives you a way to do that. And I don't, anyone who has used Android on a tablet or whatever in a Chromebook will tell you, like, these apps are not that great, actually, full screen or big, whatever. Um, that can change over time. But, you know, maybe they don't have to be great. And, I, and that's the scary thing, I think, from the Microsoft perspective. Like, really, this thing just has to be good enough. Mm -hmm. And it becomes viable competition. Right? It doesn't have to be as, you know, the version of Word that ships on uh, phones and tablets is, is good. It's, you know, it's not awesome, but it's probably good enough for most people. And there they were on stage demonstrating, I think it was PowerPoint mm -hmm. or whatever, and it's like, here we go again. You know, Apple did this with the <laughs> iPad Pro. And you know, there's a contingency of people on this side of the fence who are like, you got to be kidding me. Like, yep. this is this is that nightmare scenario that they kind of envisioned when Microsoft started doing this stuff. Yeah. I think the, the one brand new thing that was so shocking about this announcement to people is, I believe this is the first time Microsoft will sell Android phones in its retail stores. Yeah. I'm pretty that's sure true. that's a, a that's true, true statement. Yep. So, you know, if, you th if you've been in a Microsoft store and you know what they look like, they used to have a lot of Windows phones in Microsoft stores. Like the whole front would be, have a big display. So now they're running out of things to put there, right? If you think about this, there are fewer and fewer Windows phones. So yeah. I think yep. they're going right. to the sell what they The last new Windows sell. phone that Microsoft made shipped over a year ago now, right? The 650, I think. Yeah. Mm. It's been a long time. Yep. Yeah, so they probably have, if you go into a store today, I would imagine you would see... Uh, maybe some of those phones you might see that 640, 640 XL, which are on that list right. you had. Um, Probably the HP Elite, right, is in there. HP Elite, absolutely, yeah, yeah. Yeah. How do you? Uh, I didn't. I don't know enough about what this is going to look like with this uh, Dex uh, and Microsoft mm -hmm. Office combination. Do you know more about that? What it's going to no. look like? Or, or I mean, these are this is that the, these are the Android versions of Office, obviously. Well, th so everything they're going to put on there is available today. The the way. To anyone, right? You, you with any Android phone can get this stuff. Yeah, um, but it wouldn't the, do anything until you put it on a 27-inch screen. I mean, no, no, you can get them today, and they work on the phone. They work on the phone. They screen. window, so but another, you can't. Re you can't like 
They're not. It's not. It's, it's right. a tiling it's interface. It's not an overlapping window interface, which this would be. So they've they've really modified the OS quite a bit. It's got what looks like a start uh, menu. Sam, Samsung has. Yeah, yeah. 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 Right. Which is why I sort of think you know, uh, like for example, Samsung. I believe before Google did it, added a like a two window. They view, did. Two app. They were the right? first to do that. Yeah. Yeah. And so but that kind of thing makes a lot more sense when it's kind of part of the platform. So I don't know how Samsung's going to do it, but I know that yeah. today. Microsoft has uh, versions of its Android apps, and I don't know if it's exactly the same EXE, but they work across phones and tablets, and so they will expand the ability. Yeah, I think you have to customize it, because uh, it's my understanding that this, these DeX features will only at launch be available on the Samsung apps and the Microsoft apps. Not any arbitrary tablet, you know, Android tablet app will work. Yeah, so, right, in other words, right. So, so some additional possible. customization, I think. Mm. Yeah, there could be. I mean, Microsoft has uh, said that they would tailor the Office apps for Chromebook as well, and maybe that's part of the same effort. In other oh, words, that would same, be this. That would make sense if that. Yeah, it's right. the same basic effort, right? Yeah. Take make a thing and allow it to scale. They do this with the UWP on Windows today. Right. One of the goofy things you can do on a Windows 10 PC, if you want to, you should try this: is take any window like the Settings app and and resize it so it looks like a phone screen so it's kind of a portrait thing and it, what you'll see is something that would make sense right, on a phone because right. it literally scales correctly uh and, and not just scales it, it changes the layout so it, look, it makes sense for that form factor um microsoft has a, a long history doing this kind of thing with its apps and i just don't know enough about the android office apps to know if today they literally have say a separate word app on phone and tablet whether it's the same app or it, whether it you know, it's the same app. It already does that kind of transformation. Maybe this is something that's built in. I, I don't know. I don't but, know either. That's what I was asking. I was wondering if you. Yeah, but I would I, I would guess it's based around the same work they're doing to update those apps so they they right. look and work better on Chromebooks, right? right? Mm. I'm guessing. All right, and one more thing: Microsoft and Casio. Yeah. <laughs> that was a weird one too, right? So Microsoft and Casio announced a, a patent. Uh, licensing deal this week where here's all we know. Microsoft in, and Casio are engaged in a patent deal that involves smartwatch technologies. Okay, Casio makes smartwatches, obviously, but Microsoft doesn't even make a fitness band anymore. So, right. you know, people immediately are jumping to the conclusion, does this mean Microsoft's going to resell Casio watches? <laughs> I think no. I, hope I think no, people. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> what I think and, you know, when they do these patent agreements, there's no depth to them. It just says, hey, we made a patent agreement. Isn't that great? Um, it, yeah. I think what this one is about is more um, having to do with Azure services that will connect through the sensors on the watch and maybe also the Microsoft Health Service, which still lives, even though the fitness band does not. That's my guess. Um, neither one is saying what the patent agreement covers in this case, but... Still kind of interesting so you, to see. You don't these think two it's working. an Android Wear watch and that they're getting patent indemnification versus the stuff they have against Android mm -hmm. slash Linux? I mean, huh. I don't Really? Wow, that's involved. I don't know. Did, is that no, what I you thought? I don't, no. Well, I, Casio makes watches, right? So Yeah, right. And keyboards. I thought more like Microsoft <laughs> services. I, maybe yeah, even no Office idea. 365 notifications on the watch. Um, I don't know. Yeah. Right, they have their own little electronics platform. Yeah. Probably, I, just, I think yeah. this though is is part of that big story that we alluded to earlier in the show that Microsoft will be anywhere. They don't, you know, yeah. if they'll promote Dropbox or Box. They'll 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 work sure. on Casio. Why does that make yep. people mad? It does, doesn't it? But I think <laughs> yes, it's brilliant. It What's wrong with that? Yeah, it's right? the, it's the right strategy. It's, of course, that's it is. Thing. Yeah, uh, especially if you're a cloud services company, you know. Yep. All right, are you ready for the back of the book? All right, we'll flip to that last page of the magazine in just a second. <laughs> but first, a word from our sponsor, the folks at Cloudflare. When I, uh, you know, I've known Cloudflare years, used it for years. Um, by the way, they have a free product anybody can use. So if you want a website that's more responsive, more secure, I'll tell you about that in a second. But when I, when they first said, well, yeah, what do we think? They've never done advertising. They said, we should advertise on Twitter. I said, yes, you should. Uh, I'm good friends, uh, love the people there. John Graham Cummins, their CTO, has uh, it's been on our show several times. Uh, but I, what the first thing I said is, but I, you, one of the reasons you should do this, is I don't think people know what Cloudflare does. I think some people think Cloudflare uh, is a DDoS prevention service. They do that. 
Maybe some people think Cloudflare is a CDN, a content distribution network. They do that. S some of the more sophisticated users might understand that uh, Cloudflare can do things like provide an IPv6 connection for your website, which makes it sing on mobile. It basically, they said to me, and I love this, we're the operating system for the edge of the Internet. Now, you have to really take that apart to know what the heck that could possibly mean. But the more you know about the Cloudflare, the more you'll understand exactly what that means. So let's start with a CDN. You can, by the way, easy to sign up and set up, five minutes or less. You get us this 100 data centers all over the world that will cache your content and move it closer to the, your visitors. They automatically enable IPv6. Automatic. HTTPS rewrites, too. Keep you fast and secure. Your domain will automatically configure to use HTTP2. That's a 30% performance boost by itself. And, of course, end-to-end, -end, Cloudflare speeds up every request to your site with performant DNS, caching, content optimization, load balancing, and more. They also do DDoS protection, but, but really what they are is a massive web application firewall powered by I, a massive IP, IP reputation that updates for all users. In fact, one of the reasons they offer a free service for anybody is that now you become part of their, their firewall service. You're helping them detect bad stuff on the Internet and block it. When one customer requests a new custom WAF rule, they analyze whether it applies to the more than 6 million domains on their network. And if it does, they automatically apply that rule to everyone. It's kind of like uh, crowdsourcing spam fighting, right? That's why Gmail works so well. When somebody, if you say so, this is spam, enough people say it, Gmail starts blocking it. It's the same thing. So you get this web application firewall. Uh, you can, If you're a cloud user... This way, you can use more than one cloud provider, so you don't get locked into anybody. It lets you cache much of your content, so you'll save big on the cloud computing bill. In fact, the best thing about this, if you suddenly get super popular, it doesn't cost you any more. You pay one fee. In fact, the fee could be free. It ranges from $0 a month, 20 to 200 And, of course, if you're a really big enterprise, they've got custom plans for you. The reason they have a free part is this way... Everybody, first of all, gets the benefit of Cloudflare. No matter how small you are, your site takes off. If you get a great idea, if you go viral, Cloudflare will serve it to everybody free. And you're joining this massive neighborhood watch that helps protect everybody. It's good for everybody. I am such a fan of Cloudflare, and I'm so glad we could talk about this on our shows. Cloudflare is offering you a free online chat session is like this brilliant guy at explaining what Cloudflare is, it, it does and helping people understand how to use it. If you sign up, at even if you sign up for the free account, if you sign up at cloudflare.com slash twit, you can get a free online chat session. He's going to do a webinar with one of their top support engineers, and he can explain everything. Oh, there he is, Jameson Sundell. And he's, by the way, funny and, and great, too. You're going to love it. Cloudflare.com slash twit. I am just, I've always been over the moon for Cloudflare. And, uh, and now you can too. Cloudflare.com slash twit. Time for the back of the book. Let's uh, kick things off with Mr. P.T. Paul Therott. So I have some ridiculous number of tips here. I'll try to blow through these quickly. <laughs> Um, I just wanted to remind people about the Xamarin Challenge, which is running through the end of April, right? If you I gotta sign up, go through Thank the, you. Yeah, you got to do it. It's excellent. I, I've spent a lot of time on this myself. I've written some tips you can find on the website. There's a great forum uh, post as well with a lot of uh, feedback from the guys who designed the challenge and uh, can help you get up and started and everything. So it's kind of it's just a neat way to learn Xamarin programming and you might win a learn. Hello. You might win a Surface Studio. Yay. So it's nice. kind of a win win. Um, I don't know if this was last week when you were away or the week before, but I, I was sort of bemoaning the fact that there's no way to get a link to anything in the Windows Store. And I this came up because I had found a collection of free classics, which are available through the Windows Store, starting with the Creators Update. And there's no way to, you know, share a link. Like if I want to say, hey, Mary Jo, you know, click on this link and it will go to the Windows Store and show you all of those classics. There's no way to do that. 
Um, as it turns out, there is a way to get links to some items. I, I don't know if it's, let me look at music. Let me look at some music to make sure I'm right about this. Yeah, I don't see it for music. But for apps and games, if you navigate to a, not to a collection, but to a specific page for an app, there's a share link. It's funny, I'm, I don't actually see it here anymore. <laughs> oh, man. Actually. Well, there is a share link in there somewhere. And uh, what <laughs> somewhere. this will do is it will let you share things through that share pane, which, by the way, is the, the, how I found this ad thing I was just talking about. Um, if you share via email or some of the other methods, what it will do is actually then show you the hyperlink, right, which is what I'm looking for. So you can just copy and paste it out of the email, cancel the email, and you've got your hyperlink. Now, it doesn't help things like books. There's still no way I can't send a, uh, I can't send or share a link to a specific book. I can't share a link to any collection, whether it's for an app, you know, app collection, game collection, music, movies, TV shows, or books, whatever. But at least it's something. And so I wanted to at least acknowledge and follow up on that. And I should also highlight the fact that Ron Harding was the guy who told me about that. Uh, thank you very much for that. Um, I also mentioned, I don't, again, I don't remember if it was last week or two weeks ago, Outlook.com Premium has special promotional pricing where it's $19.95 a year. Um, that was going to end at the end of March. Uh, Microsoft has quietly extended it to the end of June. So if you are still waiting to pull the trigger on Outlook.com Premium, you have some time to, uh, to make that happen. You don't have to rush. And finally, I wanted to point out, as I do every month, that um, it's April. And that means there's more free games through Games with Gold. And <clears throat> this is one of the better months. Um, Rice, Son of Rome, which is one of the launch titles for the Xbox One, is free this month. Uh, the Walking Dead. Season two, the Telltale game series, which is excellent. I've actually finished this game. Uh, it will be free at the second half of the month. And Assassin's Creed Revelations, Xbox 360 game, is free at the end of the month. The other game is something called Dark Set. I'm not actually familiar with that one. But it's this is one of the best months I've seen in, in quite a while. So make sure you are paying attention to that. Yeah. <laughs> and then um, app pick of the week. Uh, I don't usually get to do a Windows 10 app, but thankfully this week I can. Uh, Netflix, about four months-ish after they did this on iOS and Android, has made offline viewing capabilities available on Windows 10. And what that means is that for select titles, you can actually click a download button, download the TV show or movie to your device, bring it out in the world, play it offline, like if you're on a plane or whatever. Um, and that's obviously an awesome capability for anyone who has Netflix. So it's available now on Windows 10. I think it's only Windows 10 for PCs, though I don't believe you can do this on Windows Phone. Cool. And how about an Enterprise Pick of the Week, Mary Jo Foley? Yes. Um, the Enterprise Pick is something I've been talking about for a while that is finally here. Um, it's a product. Well, it's actually two services from Citrix. One of them lets you run Windows 10 desktops virtually on Azure. Um, the name of that product from Citrix is called Zen Desktop Essentials. Rolls right off the tongue. $12 <laughs> per user per month for this or $144 per user per year. You need, this is not for everyday users, individual users. This is for enterprises. It's um, a 25 seat minimum to do this. You have to have an enterprise agreement that gives you windows per user licensing. So that limits you again to which ones you can uh, use in conjunction with this. It's basically windows 10 enterprise, but you have to have the E3, the E5, per user plan or Windows VDA per user. Even, even with all those restrictions, there are going to be companies that want this because up until now, the only way you could run Windows 7 or 8 desktops on Azure was if you were doing it for research or testing purposes. You couldn't do it commercially, which is interesting. But now you can, but only if you buy Zen, Des Zen Desktop Essentials. If you're wondering where can you buy it, you can go to the Azure Marketplace and buy it. Um, you can buy it on a monthly basis um, and have an auto renewal on it. And if you're really crazy and you also want to use this other service that Citrix has, which is called Zen App Service, not to be confused with Zen Desktop Essentials, um, this service lets you run business apps, not full desktops on Azure. And uh, again, 25 seat minimum, $270 per user per year because you buy it with the Zen desktop service as a bundle. Um, and again, just for enterprise customers, really not for everyday users, but that's why it's the enterprise pick of the week. <laughs> Makes sense. Would it does. Want it oh, and I have one, one, 
One little masses. additional pick. Yes. Can I do it a second enterprise pick? No. Yes, of course. Okay. <laughs> Office 365 K1 users, you're out there. I know who you are. You are the people who are buying what's called the kiosk plan or the K plan. And what the kiosk plan is for is for um, companies that have people who they call frontline workers, you know, like service workers, deskless workers, they used to call them. Um, the, Microsoft just updated this plan so that it includes more services than it used to. And one of the things it added to the K1 plan is support for Teams. Remember Microsoft Teams, the competitor to Slack, that's now built into this plan if you buy it. The other thing they built in that's interesting is Staff Hub, which is a, an application that Microsoft talked about a little while ago that lets people coordinate their work schedules. You know, people who work as shift workers, they can use this app to schedule and talk to their supervisors and, and such. Um, there are a few other pieces in there. There's some new Skype for Business services. Um, there's some Office 365 video capabilities now built into K1. So if if you're somebody who already subscribed to the K1 plan or you're interested in it, um, it's it now is much more robust. K1 is $4 per user per month or $48 per year. There you go. Second enterprise pick. Yes. <laughs> Do not confuse it with the K1 filing for the SEC. No. That's no. different. No. Yep. That's a whole different That's K1. Different. That's different. <laughs> And now Sopris, not to be confused with Scorpio. Right. So Sopris is something that our friend the walking cat had been asking around about for a while. And now we know what Sopris is. It's our code Project name of the week I should have mentioned. Yes, sorry. <laughs> yes. Project Sopris um, is a new research project inside Microsoft that has some pretty big names attached to it, including Galen Hunt. Galen Hunt is one of the main researchers who worked on Singularity and Drawbridge and Menlo. So a lot of big operating systems projects at Microsoft that became products. Um, the Sopris team is doing something very interesting. They're trying to make low cost Internet of Things devices more secure. And the way they're trying to do it is to redesign microcontrollers, the actual microcontroller. Um, so they're working right now with MediaTek, which is a microcontroller vendor, and they actually rebuilt a microcontroller with them to make it more secure. And their idea is that if they can figure out how to do this in a, in a kind of a low cost volume way, that maybe they can get other microcontroller vendors to do this too and make Internet of Things more secure because we are hearing a lot about um, breaches with Internet of Things type products and their whole mission is to try to make this more secure. So the, the question is, why is the code name Sopris? I th here's my theory why, it, Microsoft never said, but one of the guys working on Sopris is a senior hardware engineer at Microsoft. His name is George Letty or Leety, and he is based in Fort Collins. So Mount hmm. Sopris is a mountain in Colorado. Oh, that's it, you got it. That's my guess. Good ding, guess. ding, ding. I buy it. <laughs> yeah. So, but if you haven't read about Sopris or heard about it, I, I wrote about it today on my site. Um, and it's pretty interesting. And I'm really intrigued about the software researchers who are part of this project. Sopris. I need some beer. Do you wouldn't have a beer on you, would you? I don't have one on me, but I had this beer and it was fantastic. Mm, uh huh. Um, every year, Founders makes a new batch of what they call KBS, Kentucky. Uh, breakfast stout. <laughs> breakfast? Okay. Yeah, because they also make a founder's breakfast stout that's a regular stout, but this one is a stout aged with vanilla and coffee and then put in oak bourbon oh, barrels for oh, a year. this has so good. <gasps> oh, man. It's like a dessert oh. in a glass, pretty oh. much. And the new batch just, uh, it comes out to people in the founder's brewing area in Michigan first, usually in March, and then the rest of the country starts getting it around April 1st. So now it's hitting all the markets in the U.S. So if you have a chance to try KBS, the 2017 batch, I just had some and I can recommend mm, it thoroughly. Mm, 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 mm. Very good. Sounds fantabulous. It is pretty good. <laughs> Coffee, bourbon. Vanilla. Vanilla. I know. Everything that's good for you. All in one for glass. For breakfast. For breakfast. <laughs> I don't know if I would drink that one for breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> it's dessert for breakfast and it's beer. <laughs> yeah. Mary Jo Foley, she is the queen of Microsoft at allaboutmicrosoft.com or ZDNet blog. She gets all the scoops. 
does a few exclusives here and there too. So great to have you on. And of course, now uh, she's a co worker, double co worker of Paul's, not only this show, but at Petri.com. Uh, she, you, you're the host at IT. IT Unity. Unity. Um, but, but if you go to Petri.com, you'll see what I'm working on right now. Okay. Oh. Yep. All right. Cool. Paul Thorot, he's at Thorot.com, T H U R R O T dot com. That's where he hangs his hat. You can also find his books at leanpub.com. And both Paul and Mary Jo are here along with me every Wednesday at about 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 19, 1800 UTC. If you want to stop by and join us, you can join us in the chat room at irc.twit.tv. You can also join us in the studio, as a, a number of intrepid folks have, by emailing tickets at twit.tv. <laughs> well, you never know. Am I wearing pants? Only they know. <laughs> Could be shorts. You don't know. Uh, hey, Leo, are you going to come to build? I forget if you said yay or nay. Where is it? Seattle. When is it? May 10th, 11th, and 12th. It's not out of the question. Should I? Because we could do the show Friday from Build Ooh, Live. All right. Let me talk to uh, let me talk to the boss. See, I'd like <laughs> to do that. That'd be fun. That'd be pretty yeah, cool. I'd love to do that. If not, you'll be doing it live from there anyway. So yeah, just whether I'll be here or there. Mm -hmm. Okay, May twelfth. Then the show would be May twelfth is the Friday that okay. week. Awesome. Yeah, I love Seattle. Seattle's we'll great. Take a, take a trip up to Seattle for you. Mm -hmm. uh, we uh, we uh, are going to be back next uh, Wednesday right here though, and of course you can always watch anytime you know that fits your schedule because we make on demand downloads available at twit.tv slash ww or uh, subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. You'll find it there. Windows Weekly. By the time we uh, convene again, we Paul and I started the show when Vista was coming out. Yeah. <laughs> By the time we convene again, it'll be the creator's update. And people will be howling in pain or pleasure. We don't know. <laughs> there yeah. will be howling. <laughs> <laughs> Much as there will be when I stand up in a moment. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> Thus entering the, ending that debate. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time on Windows Weekly. Bye-bye. <laughs> no, I'm